All right, today yeah, I'm here man. with Sean Cooper. How's it going, mate? Good, bro. Good, good. It's good to be here, man. Yeah, yeah. It's good to see you again. Yeah. I think uh, I haven't seen you for a few months, eh? Yeah, yeah. Last time was a, a coffee. It was that the first, only time that I've met you in person. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. First time we met was on um, when you came onto the podcast. Yeah, yeah, so that was the Hustle and Flow podcast. That was it, yeah, man. That's it. I, I'm really bad with numbers and dates. So yeah. do you remember roughly when that Dude, was? I am too. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, do you remember back? And I'm like, that time, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man, it just, it all melds into the same kind of... Yeah year and even years i'm bad with yeah i always wonder that man when you hear people talk they're like yeah so in like october of 2008 i was this and i'm like how do you remember that some people like, are good yeah like yeah. i never even did math in um high school like i dropped math in uh year 12 okay so i think i was the last year of high school where maths wasn't completely compulsory yep so i dropped it like there was one unit of math which was like we called it maths in the beer garden or maths okay. in space. It was yep. M I S, I think. Okay. But um, but yeah, I dropped that. I was always bad with numbers. Just even Anzac Day when yep. you've got that little tray of little Anzac pins. Yeah. I'd yeah. go into the city and sell stuff, and people would give me like five bucks, and I wouldn't be able to calculate the change. <laughs> They'd be like, "Oh, don't worry about it. Just keep it." Well, you don't need to worry about it now, man. Calculators, <laughs> spreadsheets, everything. True, right? Yeah, man. True, right? Yeah, yeah. That hasn't made me better though. Like I think um. When I look at technology and look at um, typing stuff, yep. like writing stuff, mm -hmm. and how it's often trying to correct me, that has helped a lot. Yep. And like, because I used to hand all my assignments in by typewriter. So I used to like sit okay. there and type shit. Yeah, man. And, no, autocorrect um, on that. No, like. well, no, you'd, you'd have to have the liquid paper <laughs> yeah, man. and you go back and do it again. But um, like from going from a typewriter to a word processor, just being able to sit there and um, more fluidly like take part of a sentence that you wrote after and then put it before and it just changes the entire flow of a paragraph. Totally. And it's so, I find it so fun yep. to do. Like it, even now, like I force myself to keep writing. Yep. And it's, it's one of those things where I kind of write how I speak but I think a bit better than that, it's more connected to my head. So it's like... Uh, it's like graphic design taught me to pile it all on. Yep. You've, it's digital. You've got lots of layers. You've got undos forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you can always pile it on first, refine and strip it back later. Yep. And it's a little bit harder to do on a canvas because it's more like you have this white canvas. You Next thing you know, it's all too much and it's yeah, yeah. really hard to strip it back. But with writing, I find I'll just go blah and then... Oh shit! I'll just start finesse shift, it a bit. Sh yeah, shifting yeah. sentences around makes a world of difference. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. It reminds me. There's like this saying about communication in written form, and it's like, mm. sorry, I wrote you a long letter. I didn't have the time to write you a short one. <laughs> right? It's because right. like, yeah, we blur everything out, and then mm. we usually like refine it back, right, to be more yeah. to the point, be more yeah. eloquent. Yeah get our point across how we want to get it across whereas like you just word vomit shit when you want to get it out and then you're like that's it it's like when you're fighting with someone totally man yeah, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. Read, you read it back it's like oh fuck like yeah you know like I, I, I kind of hate that one of, that's one of the feelings that I hate is just when I'm too quick sometimes to respond to someone that I'm fighting with okay and then the next day I'm like fuck I could have said something way nastier <laughs> 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 you know? That's funny, man. <laughs> this is something way nastier. <laughs> like some, someone asked on, um, a friend of mine actually, but uh, she asked on her uh, Facebook, how does money make you feel? And I okay. was so quick, I just typed in dirty. But, <laughs> you, you know, uh, she, she would have got a bit shitty with that because yeah. she, she didn't want that. She wanted people to be like, um, you know, makes me feel sparkly or makes me feel like going shopping and yeah, all this yeah, kind of yeah. cheesy stuff. But then like the next day I woke up and like, fuck, I should have said something like, you know, you're born with no money, you, you die with no money. And then the, the <laughs> next day I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I've got something even better than that. I should have said this. <laughs> <laughs> I so, think that's like everyone's pain point, man. What you could have said. Just, oh, what you could have said. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's what I like about podcasts because yep. like I, I do try not to listen to them, but... um. Okay. Like, sometimes I'd be worried about what I might have said, 
as, especially if I'm drinking. Like yep. if I if I drink into a podcast, I'm like, oh, like <laughs> I, I could say something nasty and yeah, a bit of a dick when I drink. I tend to be a bit, maybe ear a little bit more towards the negative. Okay. Yeah, which is not good. Yeah. I mean, um, it's it's an interesting topic. I think for me right now, it's kind of like. Um, I did a podcast with um, this guy in the US mm-hmm. and he runs a show called A Year From Now. Okay. So what he does is interviews people who are in really fucked up situations right now. Okay. Um, even though he knew that I was like climbing out of something, yeah. he still thought sort of fits. Mm-hmm. And then he would interview me for a couple of hours and then come back to me a year later. Uh, and after I've after he's ringed out of me like, what are your goals for a year? Okay. He'd come back to me a year later and see whether I've reached those goals. Okay. And um, man, I, we, we went really deep about depression and all that shit. But in the end, he tried his hardest to like ask me, what are your goals for a year from now then? Okay. And I just, I've never been a planner. Yep. I've never been good at setting goals. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm one of those people that if I set goals, the goalposts just keep moving. Okay. So yeah. I, I know that. I know myself really well. Mm-hmm. So it was super hard for me to say anything except that one thing that I've come to the realization, like since doing that podcast with you guys, is like I sounded a little bit angry in that and I have an angry side of me. Okay. And I want to find more peace. So he was like, oh, but what's the goal? I'm like, well, that is... The goal yep. is to Did you just, realize that in the moment, like when you were having the conversation with him? It kind it kind of came out. It yeah. kind of came out that like I don't want to set a goal here. Yeah. Like uh, I was open to it, yeah, and I was trying to think of something, but I'm like, man, I'd prefer to like not even look at a year. Like we talked about, like when was that podcast? I don't even fucking know. Mm. Yeah. So it could have been a year ago. It, it, it it's life is long for me yeah, now. Man. It's kind of like oh shit, this is not ending anytime soon. Yeah. So I've got plenty of time. You know, even um. People are like, Justin, when are you taking that GTR out, out again? Come on, you know, no more excuses, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I've still got it. I never <laughs> sold it. Yeah. I've got plenty of time mm. to drive that car. Yeah. It'll come out when I feel like it's ready to come out yeah. or when I'm back into it or whatever. But uh, I'm not in a rush situation. Gotcha. So, yeah, so like trying to find more peace means that I have to catch myself out when someone writes something on Facebook and then it makes me, my blood boil a little bit and I just want to like troll. I, yeah. And I don't like haters and trolls. Yeah, man. You know? Well, it's hard. Like it's hard to hold your tongue in those situations. Um, <laughs> I think like personally for me, I feel fortunate because when I was really young and I was in corporate, I started, I had to like, there's a lot of official communication, right? And someone like a client would say something that you're just like, fuck this guy, right? Obviously, you kind of fuck you and you yeah. email back to him. <laughs> yeah. You feel it. So you write something a bit more like passive aggressive. And then, yeah, one of my, he's still a really good friend of mine, man. He was like my mentor and he was my boss at the time. Then he's like, just, dude, don't ever respond like when you're in the moment. Right. He's like, write it out, put it aside. That's fine. Come yeah. back to it. And you know you're never going to send that one. That you yeah, wrote. yeah. And that's like, right. that's one of those lessons just stuck with me, man. So they like, say that, right? Write it scrunch it up yep and then like even like hindi kind of um i i, I was i was uh searching on um people who've got unresolved issues okay and how to deal with them mm-hmm. and there's no clear answer there's a shit ton of videos yeah that say unresolved issues are really bad for your health yeah that if you have them you'll probably die a lot quicker you'll you'll grow older quicker mm-hmm. and it's the kind of shit that you don't, it's not that you don't want to take it to the grave. You will go to the grave. Yeah, like it's getting you to the grave. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So like so many videos out there, people are uh, saying how important it is to solve your issues. Yeah. But there's no videos on how. How to do it. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. So the one that I found that a whole, pe- a whole load of people in the comments said they did it and it helped was you, you write every single day on a piece of paper, you write down your unresolved issue. Okay. And then you, you burn it and you watch it burn. Mm-hmm. And you just do it every day. I'm like, fuck that. I, there's no way I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to do nothing for yeah. me. Yeah. But um, yeah, like when I hear that, I'm like, sounds nice. But right. 
uh, like I get the symbology of it and mm. that, you know, y- there might be some connection to, I don't know, like that you feel internally your subconscious latches onto us, like it's burning away. And Well, it's similar to know. that whole write it down, the anger and yep. instead of sending it to someone, yeah, sending it back to your partner or a client, you write it, yep. scrunch it up and you put it in the bin. Yeah. It's probably similar. Yeah, it's very similar to that. Like, um, you know, whenever I do, I, I'll write, like if someone, you know, sends me an email and I'm like, fuck. Mm. Like, I've just trained myself now, man, to be like, whatever you write now is not going to be good. Just you write mean, down like the main points of yeah. what, like why you're annoyed or whatever. Yeah. Then write it later. Yeah. Because you're never as shitted like after you leave it for a little while. Next day, next two hours. Like. Calm down. You calm down, man. Center again. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then like. Do you think that if you do too much, like if you do that too much, yeah, because like, being there is something to be said about being reactive and yeah. compulsive as well, yeah, you know, like um, the person who sits there in a conversation and you can see their brain ticking over, but they're not contributing mm-hmm. or they only contribute every now and then. Um, I take it as a little bit of a sign of insecurity sometimes because yep. they're not like you can just see they want to join the conversation. I would agree with you 100% on that, bro, but they're just. Because I used to be like that. Mm. I used to be like that. Yeah. So like what I would say, like too considered, right? Yep. And it's funny, man. It's coming up like for me recently, people have been telling me, they're like, man, you just like get, you're real fucking, like you're real fiery. You, yeah. Yeah, right? Mm. Whereas like before, if you ask anyone, they'd be like, yeah, he's pretty chill, dude. Right. Um, and like I can see it in myself, like I just get fired up about shit. Yeah. Like much more easily now. And I wonder if that's because I'd suppressed that for so long. You know what I mean? Mm. Like a, a considerable portion of my life because of what I did for work. And like I just deal with a whole bunch of different people and it was always like about this decorum, right? There's always this layer of fucking... You, I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying, but we don't fucking say it mm. because it's not what you do mm. in this business setting, right? Mm. And I've got to wonder about how this is going to affect us like two years down the road and I'm going to have a contract with you and I need to make sure all the peace is kept and all that shit. And like over time, man, I'm just like, fuck that. Right. Fuck that. So like now when I feel something, I'll say it, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think like because in the past I've been like karma, quote unquote karma, right? And um, a lot more considered for sure. Like I've always known that like I've been considered in what I've said mm. and I haven't said things I want to say. Now when I say them, people are like, fuck, where's that from? Yeah. Catches, it's almost like the bluntness of it sometimes catches people off yeah. guard, right? Yeah, man. But I mean, would you still say, because it's funny how the tables flip sometimes. Like, do you, would you still say like, it's better out than in? Whereas when you used to keep it in, you might've thought it's just easier to keep it in because when you get it out, it's like drama potentially or... More, more talk. Yeah. If you keep it in, there's less talk. But then it's kind of like now that you're good at it, mm. do you find it's actually the other way around and it's easier to get it out than it is to just shut up and keep it in? Yeah. So I don't know if I'm good at it, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I definitely think it's better to like have it out there, mm. talk about it yeah, and then work out where we're at. You know what I mean? Right. Because by keeping it in, dude, you're essentially assuming – what that other person wants to hear, delivering based on that. Mm. And it might not be what the fucking case is. Mm. So I'm like, um, and holding it in just like, it's that whole beach ball analogy, right? Like something's coming up and you're just pushing it down and it wants to blow out of the water. And I think if you do that too much, you just become like suppressed and it builds right. this pressure inside you. Yeah. Um, and like one thing that, I know that I have a propensity for is like knowing how my emotions are making me feel. Mm. Knowing when I'm in an emotional state, right? So like right. if I'm getting like aggravated, you're I, aware I'm, of I'm it. like, yeah, you're getting aggravated, bro. Like mm. think about why, mm-hmm. maybe scale it back a bit. Mm-hmm. Because I'm also mindful, man, about how the way that we communicate to people or say shit to people, um, like it affects them and, and how your conversation is going to go moving forward. Totally, man. Right? Like, I lose sleep over that shit. I lose sleep when I have a fight with someone. Yeah. I'm not talking about huge fights. Yeah. yeah. I'm just talking about, like, a disagreement, but a passionate one Mm -hmm. where it's between two people that respect each other. Yes. Right? And they're the ones that hurt. Yeah. Because 
I don't, I'm not, I'm not on the planet to disappoint people. Yeah. Right. So when someone finds it sad that I have a certain viewpoint on something that is completely opposite to theirs, mm-hmm. um, I'm glad that we, we usually end the conversation with, well, I love you. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I love you too. This is all right. Yeah. You know, but yep. that's because there was respect there yes. beforehand. Yep. You know, so, but they're the, they're the ones that like I lose sleep over because I mm-hmm. sit there and, and I think, fuck, maybe I could have worded that in a more constructive way. Yep. Maybe I shouldn't have got worked up. But usually you're talking about something that's you're passionate about, so you get worked up. Uh, and in the moment, you know, you tend to say things sometimes that are not as polished as... For know. sure, man. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing as well. I think there's something to not being so fucking polished mm. about what you say all the time because mm. it's not real. Mm. It's not how you actually feel. Mm. You're trying to control someone else's response. Yeah. That's what you're trying to do, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you, can't, you can't please it. Well, yeah. there's that, and that the, sort of saying. You can't really please everybody. Right. But you can also admit that you're wrong. Like, it, that, yeah. I love that when yeah. I, when I, when I um, you know, sometimes that just plants a seed in my head. Yeah. And then I, and I start to think about it so much that I'm mm-hmm. like, shit. Um, a lot of the time, like, taking a step back, I mean, we've, I've been doing this for years anyway. Yeah. I, think, I think a lot of us do, right? Yeah. You take a step back and you're like, oh, fuck, you put so much uh, energy into something that really didn't require that much energy. Mm. Yeah, you man. Know? For sure, for <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I totally feel you on that one, man. Totally feel you on that one. And with the thing of, like, saying what you want to or holding it in or whatever, I've kind of gone on this, like, this pendulum swing of it. So I was like really considered mm-hmm. and then I went through this period where I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to say what I want. Right. And however you feel about it, that's how you feel about it. Yeah. That's not on me. Would you call that insensitivity? Yes. <laughs> kind of, right? Yeah, like, it is. That yeah. is insensitive because I think like a, yeah. I could consider your feelings but I don't. Yeah. There's a difference maybe between, well, definitely a difference between being open and being blunt. Yeah. And disregarding yeah. everything around yeah. you except what you want to say. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's very different. So, yeah. yeah, like I kind of swung from that. Uh, I'm going to be real careful about what I say because of how that person might take it, what might happen later, how it's construed, blah, 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 to fuck it, I don't care, man. I'm just going to say whatever I want. And mm. how you take it, that's how you take it. Mm. And like um, I'm saying it because like either I think it's right or because I love you and you'll work it out. Mm. But like not everybody has that propensity. Yeah. And yeah. I know that. Yeah. So knowing that and being that way is inconsiderate, man. It's insensitive. It I, I used to be like that so much. Yeah. And it's just taken me a long time to uh, yeah. bring it back a little bit and realize that I can... Some things don't need to be said. Like, yes. you know, it is going back yeah, to man. how you were before, but it's kind of like, um, if this is only going to upset somebody, then maybe don't say it or word it in a much more constructive yeah. way. Yeah, and, and like, why are you saying it? Right. If it's like... See, that's the thing, right? Like, I have a fear of now that I'm, now that I'm sort of, I feel like I'm back, but my, my, my whole mission for my whole life has been um, so long as I can inspire others, mm-hmm. then it gave, gave me a reason to, to be on the planet. Yep. It was sort of my purpose, mm-hmm. you know, which I hate. I hate that kind of like, yep. what's your purpose? Like, but if you're um, going to choose one, that's a great one, dude. It was, I think, it was good for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But now it's kind of like, I look at that as fluff now. Okay. And, um, you know, now it's like, it's almost like I used to try to inspire people, but if I look back at how I was inspiring people, sometimes it was through confusion because they could see that I was so into something. Mm -hmm. But then they were at a level that was uh, so far away from the level that I was at Mm -hmm. that... I might have come across slightly patronizing yep. sometimes. Yep. And it's like um, a great example is Jim Carrey, right? He's, he's, everyone thinks he's an amazing comedian. He's done really well. Yeah. But, you know, a few years ago it came out that he, his wife died. He went through absolute rock bottom. Mm-hmm. And he's never been the same since. He's like everyone kept calling him woke. His work is so woke. But... When I watch his woke videos, which are like compilations of him um, saying really whack whack things, Mm. all these videos are meant to be positive because they're like celebrating how woke he is. But, 
And all the comments are all positive too. But I'm sitting there watching a guy who's being really patronizing to the person in front of him. And it's usually, you know, someone that's interviewing him at a red carpet event or mm-hmm. um, the movie, movie, you know, when they're promoting a movie, they'll sit down and do a little talk about it to yeah. promote the movie. And he will disregard your questions because your questions are pretty basic. Okay. Everyone's questions are pretty much like, oh, you know, Jim, what brings you to the red carpet? Or you, you look great in that suit, man. <laughs> yeah. And he'll just go, you don't exist. You're, okay. you're a bunch of molecules and particles. Okay. I'm not Jim Carrey. Like, I'm, I'm not here. Um, gotcha. You know, he's like, his whole thinking is kind of like, he used to feel like he lived in the universe, but now he is the universe. Okay. And um, it's his level of talk now. Yeah. It's like, it's so um, next level that everyone he's conversing with, even though you can tell he's a good guy. Yeah. And you can tell he means well, but it's almost like, you're a flea and he's just like... Yeah, I get what you're saying. And he's like, he's, I, he's I trying to you. say to you, wake the fuck up. Yeah. But it's coming across in such a heavy way that yeah. you don't understand it. Yeah. And it comes across as quite patronizing to me. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be like that. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, like, like there's levels to the shit, right? And if you're like at this level up here and someone mm. else's understanding is down here mm. and you say that shit is going to feel patronizing because they're going to be like, oh, so you think you know more than me. And, and, and that's how it would come across. Right. And it's like, it's almost like the Matrix kind of thing where you, yeah. you red pill, blue pill, you kind of want people to wake up. Yeah. But then, but do maybe, you really? Yeah. Well, the well, interesting thing about that, right, is like um, maybe if Morpheus had said whatever he said to Neo in kind of a dick way, he would have been like, fuck you, and took <laughs> the other pill. <laughs> right. Right. And right, stayed trapped. Than holding his hands. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like, what do you want to get out of what you're saying to someone? Yeah, and, and what and are your intentions that's too? Right. You know, and with that, totally like, um, you know, I haven't heard what Jim Carrey said. Mm, I'm just mm, going mm. off what you're telling me now, right? But it's yeah. like, if you rocked up to Red Carpet, they're like, "Hey, man, actually," and you're like, "We're just molecules." Yeah, I don't exist. Like, what is that person meant to do with that? Oh, they just freak out. Do you know what I mean? Like, they freak out. Yeah, like if you think that maybe, oh, I'm gonna say something in a way that makes them think about it differently. Like, there's ways to make people think differently. There's yeah, and he's not because he's so fucking nonchalant about it because yeah. he's so over it. Like you yeah. can just see it in his face. He is like, why the fuck are you asking me such yeah. dumb questions? Ask me some fucking good questions for a mm-hmm. change. Yep. You know, it's, it's almost like how all celebrities feel about selfies is yeah. like if you came up to me and I could smell that you wanted a selfie mm-hmm. but you still at least fucking tried to have a conversation with me about something real, yep. then I'll be okay with the selfie. Yeah. But if you just come up to me asking me for a selfie, you're just taking. Yeah. A lot of celebrities feel like that. Okay. Which I find fascinating. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's kind of like you don't want to feel just like used maybe. <laughs> well, you're human. Yeah. In the end of the day. And yep. what someone thinks of you is, you know, so elevated yeah. that like they're getting what they want. Yeah. But did it add to your day or not? True. Not sure, True. you know. With the... um. With the thing of like, like the Jim Carrey example, right? Mm, mm. For me, I always think about that. It's like, you got to meet people where they're at, man. It's kind of like meeting people halfway. Yeah. Or just like, um, you know, everybody talks about empathy now. But Mm. it is important because Mm. it's like, dude, um, if there's something that I want to relate to you, Mm. I think I have a much better chance of me communicating with you and you understanding where I'm coming from and what I want you to understand if I try to bring it to you in a way that I... Think you may understand. Yep. Instead of at a level where like you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. It's still a baby step. It's not like a fucking blow you out yeah. of the sky. Yeah, man. It's more like, oh, this is something that a tool that you might be able to use. That's right. As opposed to fuck, you're never gonna get here. Yeah. Right. And and also like, because then it doesn't make the person feel like, oh, I have no idea what they're fucking talking about. Yeah. I'm not even gonna bother. You're not alienating anyone. You're not making passionate, you're not making someone feel stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 also. Dude, some people aren't like don't have the knowledge about what you're talking about. They have no idea, and that's so. cool. And they and they like, and, and they could be happy. Yeah, they could be happy just that's doing right. the interviewer thing and having a good night. Yeah, until you came along. That's <laughs> right. Not everything you have to say is prolific. Yeah. You don't have to save everyone. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. With what you're saying, you don't have to convince everyone of something. Like yeah. what you think is what you think. Yeah. Right. And 
that's cool. You can think that, but not everybody has to think that way. I, 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 I'm getting tired of it, like, yeah. a little bit. Like, um, I hate to use the term woke, right? But it's like consciousness or mm-hmm. being conscious, conscious about what you're saying and what you're doing and how you're living your life. And, you know, um, it's so easy in, on YouTube to go down the rabbit hole, right? Where you just watch one of those videos. Next thing you know, your whole feed's full of, you know, these inspirational, motivational, yep. change your life. No, 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 no. Right, right, yeah. right. And, 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 and I've fallen down that rabbit hole and out of curiosity, I've clicked a few of these videos. And um, I found some channels where every guest of theirs is someone who's written a book, a self-help book, or something successful, someone who's a, a speaker, or um, some people I know, some people I don't know, but they're all, they all tend to be big names within this sort of... Arena. Uh, yeah, this so, sort of like <clears throat> open-minded um, consciousness... Um, you know, helping people to think in a completely different way. Yeah. Um, and then this one particular um, show, he does really well because all, all you read all the feedback in the in the questions and the comments underneath the videos, and people are like, "Love this show. I love your questions. Really well thought out questions that allow these amazing speakers to fill in the gaps. Yep. Every question is so open ended and so well thought out that." the viewers get so much out of uh, whoever they're interviewing. Mm-hmm. Then one particular episode, which I had to dig a little bit deeper for, it didn't surface to the top, you know. He got an, um, an Indian guru, huge grey beard, wearing, you know, the sashes and stuff. Like, this guy's not in a suit. He's not in, like, the latest Nikes and stuff like <laughs> all the other guests, yeah. right? This guy's, like, fucking just visually different. Yeah. Sound of different, you know. And... um. I only watched like three or four questions. I couldn't watch the whole thing because okay. it was blowing my mind. But every question this guy from the show asked, this guru would just go, that's not the question you want to ask. <laughs> 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 He'd be like, let me, let me rephrase your question. Okay. And he would do that. Yeah. And then it got to a point where I couldn't watch it anymore because the guru was like, why do you think they know anything? Why do you think... Those guys know anything. Mm-hmm. What do you think I know anything? He's like, you know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nobody knows anything. Yeah. No one understands this. No one understands mm. consciousness or anything. Yeah. Just trying to put some meaning to it. <laughs> like, man, I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> right, I cannot deal with this. <laughs> you know, like, it's almost like, I don't want to think like we're rats on a wheel and that we're doing that just because we're keeping ourselves busy and yeah. then, or that we're the person looking after the rats or there's so many different jobs, right? And, yeah. and, and slots that you can slot yourself into in life. But then like I also don't want to think so big like Jim Carrey, I am the universe. Mm-hmm. I'm not in the universe. I am the universe and I am the sky and all this kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I don't want to think that's crazy, yeah. but I also don't... I want to put a ceiling on it. It's like, you know, um, I used to have friends that lived out in, 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 a, in a clearing in the forest, okay. right? And uh, no electricity, just living off the land. Mm-hmm. And um, I went and visited them and stayed with them. And uh, the girl who was a friend of mine, she admitted like on the third night, I was there, she said, um, you know what, like, I can't help myself, but I'm dreaming of a, just a nice mowed patch of grass. I'm like, yeah. oh, cracks, you're breaking, <laughs> you're breaking. Mm. This is getting too much for you. Yeah. You know, like, it's been her dream forever to do that. But then I could just tell, like, her boyfriend was hardcore yep. living off the land, but I could just tell she was, you know, and too right, a few years later, she was back in the city. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know that's interesting. That's but it, interesting. It, you know, like the fact that she just oh, just a patch of grass. Yeah, and it's like she knew that a patch of grass is stupid. Like she, everyone knows it's just a patch of grass. It's mm-hmm. like it doesn't. It's not the environment. Yes, it's not as amazing as these rolling fields and forests and all of yeah. that shit. But like, there's something sane about the insane. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's insane to want a patch of grass because it's weird. It's not natural. Yeah. You got to mow it. You keep it nice and, you know, no bindies and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but like I get it too. Everyone has it in their front yard, dude. So it's like, it's like those levels. Like I'm, I'm in a place right now in my life where I'm open yep. uh, to uh, where I might land up and all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, I also know that a ceiling is not a bad thing. Okay. It's like, you know, I'm not yep. like the sky's the limit and people look at that as a negative because people are like, well, you know, there's footprints on the moon, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so yeah, if you yeah, say yeah. The, sky, the sky's the limit, that fucks up your, your saying, right? Yep. Your quote right there. Mm. But um, I'm kind of like, mm, maybe a glass ceiling or, you know, it's not so bad. Yeah, that's interesting, man. Because like all we hear at the moment is like limitless. Everything. I'm over it. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I'm over it. Like I'm yeah. over, um, I'm more over the people in the comments yeah. that are like, oh my God, I'm going to watch this video every single day. Or they have been. I watch this video every morning. You know, like Joe Rogan talking about motivation. Yeah. Oh, I watch this video every morning. There's so many comments like that. I'm like, well, that's not right. Mm-hmm. Like, you shouldn't have to watch Wait, watching this every YouTube morning. video every morning. And it's got the orchestra symphony strings playing in the background. It's got like <laughs> the stock footage of a businessman with a briefcase. I'm like, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> stop it. Stop it now. You yeah, know? yeah. So I, I get it. It's like a bit of a drug for yeah, some man. people. Yeah, for sure. It you is know? definitely. I think, um, yeah, like people that need to consume motivation all the time. Like, why is that? You know what I mean? Because you, you, you're not motivated. Like, yeah, I watch it every day. It's like you're trying to get that motivation all the right. time. You're not like, actually practicing the things that they're right. suggesting for you to, the small steps. Yeah. You know, it's, all, it's, all, it's almost like um, just that reflection of how um, anything that's topical right now is so widespread over, you know, our smartphones and everything, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, like if there's something... Like, everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Everyone's posting about it. Yeah. But just as quickly as it comes, it vanishes. Mm. You know, how, like, um, like, I still can't get over how serious the bushfires were. Yeah. And as soon as the next thing comes along, what bushfires? Dude, totally. Right? Totally. Like, what about all those yep. people that still are still homeless? Yep. This is like, not, not, not in any newspaper, not in any media channel. No one's talking about it on Instagram yep. or no one's posting anything anymore. Mm. And um, that's, that pisses me off. Yeah. Because if I was one of the victims, or not victims, but if I was suffering from like losing a house, mm-hmm. I'd still be fucking upset today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But no one would, would be caring right now. Yeah. Because it's just not the right time for me to post about it because people are like, I've got other things to worry about right yeah. now. <laughs> and and that's it. I think the care factor of people has reduced, dude. Like yeah. people's care factor for things that actually matter, and of course, like the things that actually matter is subjective to whoever you talk to, right? Yeah. There are some things that do fucking matter, okay? Like significant areas of the country mm. burning, mm. people losing all their things. Mm. The fact that it's likely to happen again, like every year, right? Like it's important, man. Yeah. But like you said. As soon as like those fires are out, it's like, all right, guys. Next bandwagon. This is what we're doing. Let's look at the election in the US. Let's look at this thing over here. Oh, there was a cat that went up a tree. I'm like, dude, who cares? Yeah. Like there's yeah. a lot of stuff that's going to come out of that situation, like the fires, yeah. that has a flow on that I feel we should be considerate about and would like very carefully use that word should, right? Yeah. But it's like there are some things which carry more weight that are mm. worth caring about. Yeah. There are. And I feel that a lot of times now we just care for a little bit and then turn that caring off. And it's, it's weird. It's weird to me. It, it's savage. And I think um, like if, if I start to put some thought into how can you fix that mm-hmm. um, and how do you problem solve that? Like even if we put our, our background in advertising on for a second yep. and you start to think how can you – change this so you know that everyone's on these platforms every day Mm -hmm. be it you know twitter or whatever but it's almost like when you're running your own blog or your own website you have 
even before the technologies were doing it for you, if there was something that was important, you could bring it to the front, right? There's, yep. there's maybe the maybe the left side is 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 your navigation, but maybe the right side there's a space for you to, you know, some some websites might say this was the most viewed post. Yep. You know, and they bring those to the top. Yeah. But then, you know, one thing that we used to do as a global community of designers, we all have like our own community websites in each country. But we had this space on everyone's homepage was a space where we put all our logos together. Okay. And you could design it how you liked. You could yep. make the logos tiny. You could do a drop-down menu bar, whatever. Mm-hmm. But that whole concept of a ring. Yep. And we all represented and backed each other up on our homepages. Yep. So it's almost like if you had something that every time you log into Facebook, every time you log into Instagram, there is this little... <clears throat> yeah, bar a heat bar of sorts where mm. important topics yep. are still there, as opposed to just like it's fucking gone. Yeah, you know it's almost like it's up to um, like how we recycle is pretty automatic for us now because they gave us the bins, mm-hmm. right? So it's almost like well, if you look at it as like if you look at the people who are in power yep. that actually do get the views on their platforms every day, yeah, and then they take up some of that. Sp- Precious advertising space, yeah. and instead put topical things that still ha- have residual issues mm-hmm. would actually help a lot. I think. Yeah, I think that's really interesting to think about, man. Um, but when you say that, I always think about like people's motives for things, You're right? And like yeah. that's that's why I think things flick so quickly. It's like somebody has a different motive, something they want to push to the forefront, and that's why. Well, Other things that matter get pushed aside, right? Well, it's where the power is at, right? That's right. And that's why I'm suggesting that it's hard for yeah. people. Yeah. Like, it's hard for us to make a big dent and change yeah. on that. Yeah. But if you were running a newspaper or whatever, mm-hmm. then you really could do something. Yeah, you could. You really, really you could. could. You could. So And maybe you have to ask why they don't. <laughs> I, it, it just confuses me. Like, yeah. You know, like, it's just like a... It's almost like if you had an app that like when something's really hot, mm. then it goes to red. Yeah. And then maybe over time, sure, it goes to orange and then it eventually goes to yellow. Then yeah. it goes to green and then blue and then it, it's gone. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. But like this hot, cold, hot, cold yeah. is like... That's it, an interesting concept, you know? man. It's like maybe yeah. if there was something where, you know, we were all so on top of it. Mm. It's like that's collectively important. So maybe we should keep this at the forefront for a certain time. And maybe Correct. people didn't interact with this thing so much, then we won't. That's kind of what the algorithm is, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So I think something like that, um, you know, it's almost like checking in on a mate. Yeah. It's almost like, okay, this issue was um, a big bump mm-hmm. during this month. Yeah. Let's check in on that. Yeah. Rather than like, what's the next story? What's the next story? Yeah. You know? Next issue, next person. What's their problem? Oh, yeah, cool. That person, yeah. And you're not actually yeah. doing anything about the, the issue at hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, like, that's a lot of our culture now, man. It's just, like, uh, it's just action, reaction, but, like, that's it. Like I said, hot, cold. Symptom, quash it, next thing. Yeah, like, totally. Yeah. I, f- I find, like, going back a, a step to, like, when I was talking about how there's people that I respect and, I, and we have disagreements and stuff... If I step outside of myself and look at that from an um, outside perspective, what I see is they're really passionate about a current issue. See, that's what it okay. is. That's what's, pi- that's what's pissing me off. Yeah. Is that, hey, you never used to be like this. Mm-hmm. But now that this is an issue, be it like anything, like racism or whatever. Yeah. But it's like... It's only because it's a hot topic right now that you're posting this. Mm-hmm. And I'm here to say, well, what you're posting, factually, this isn't right. This isn't right. Mm-hmm. But no one wants to be proven wrong. No, so they're like, well, not. shut up, Justin. You see what I'm trying to say? I'm like, yeah, I can see what you're trying to say. But if you were saying it correctly without bits that are wrong, yeah. then it'd be really a lot stronger. Yeah, And I would have your back and, and I wouldn't be... Re- we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yes. So my issue is that when everyone jumps on the bandwagon and then starts spreading misinformation, that's when I get upset. Yeah. 
yeah. you know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a problem that I'm finding is like, yeah, we all know that you're, you're saying like, yeah, well, that's just the way it is now. But I get that. But it's kind of like, man, if, if, you know, it's, the, it's sadly the celebrities and stuff that tweet something that is like, it's just so wrong. Mm. And I sit there and when I see one of my friends retweet something that a celebrity says that's not right, I'm not going to send nasty shit to the celebrity. I'll send nasty shit to my mate because I'm like, <laughs> you're my mate. That, that celebrity is wrong. Mm. You know? And you kind of have this like feeling I find that you're like, man, you should know better or I wish you knew better. I, yeah, I'm just trying you know? to, you know, I respect you. So yeah. I, I want you to, if you had done, just done a little bit of research, you would have not posted that. Yeah. But then what I find hilarious is like, yeah, they won't take it down mm. because of a sense of pride or something. Yeah. Like and they that, don't want to say, oh, uh, yeah, I was wrong. I was wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is that? Yeah, that's so this is something that like is on my mind all the time, yeah. which is like, dude, I don't care about like who is right. I care yeah. about what is right. That's nice. And, and I do, man. That's what I care about. Mm. Like if you and I are talking about something, something mm-hmm. comes up, you and I get heated, we get into a disagreement, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me... Mm. I don't give a shit, man, if like, I don't have to be right. But I want to work out between us what is right. Yeah. If you come up with the answer, yeah. fucking awesome, Justin. Yeah. Thank you for taking time. We hash this out. And now I see it from this point of view. I yeah. get where you're coming from. You're right. I think that's more like inspiration, right? Where, well, that's, that's research too, right? Mm-hmm. I, Research is so awesome. And inquisition, like, mm. like not taking a fucking stance on it yeah. and just being like, I want to be right. So yeah. I'm just going to yeah. keep arguing this yeah. so that I'm right and you see me as this supreme, knowledgeable, righteous person. Like, right. That, that thing to me, like you see people online, man, and they spew things like as gospel. And I'm like... And sometimes you, without the research yes. or sometimes they're quoting somebody else. They're quoting somebody else. Yeah. You haven't actually considered what you're saying. Mm. And it's not even about what you're saying. You're saying it because you want people to see you a certain way. Yeah. That you're right. Like you're an authority. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's totally different to trying to explain something or bring something to people's attention that is important or, you know, might have them think about it in a certain way. Like wanting to be right is just... Like it's so different, man. Like... Being right versus caring about what is right. Like, do you think they're not feeling the same thing? Because I know when I feel like something's right, it's, it's like a, a belly, it's like a gut feeling, yeah. right? And it's like I, whilst I already have gone through the process of questioning myself, mm-hmm. so I have a certain criteria and, yeah. I, and a certain thing before it comes out, generally speaking, I'm comfortable with it because it's already sort of passed through what is known as me sort mm-hmm. of thing. But then um, do you think someone who thinks that they're right, do you think that feeling's the same as what I would feel? Like do you think like when you, when you, when you know you're saying something that's right yep. and then you also know that someone is just saying it because they think they're right, but do you think they're if feeling they feel the, the same, same feeling? Right? Because it's a nice feeling when you yeah. know something because it's almost like a truth. You, yes. you, you did... You, you did that um, kickflip mm-hmm. and you know you did it on that skateboard. Yeah. So that when you go out into the world and someone says, can you do a kickflip? And you say, yeah, I can. Mm-hmm. You're saying it because you did it already. Yeah. But then there's people out there that maybe I should, I, I know, all right, I'd be able to do that. Yeah. Right? It's almost like, you know. And you fucking know. You know, like, uh, uh, maybe yeah. I'm probably kind of like. <laughs> but do you reckon yeah. they feel that it, it's almost like a, because <clears throat> it's like a, do you reckon for them that it feels the same way? Like the chemistry in their head might be exactly the same as how we feel knowing that we can do the kickflip, even though they've never done it. They, they're so sure they can. Mm-hmm. Maybe they feel exactly the same fucking high. Maybe they do, man. Yeah. I don't know. If I think about it, though, I think it's like it's probably triggering some type of reward for them. Right? That's what I mean. You're triggering this, yeah. this chemistry that like... It's like it's just like lying, mm-hmm. lying. Like people who are really good at lying. Yeah. Right. It gets to a point where 
they, oh, this is going to sound so cliche, but it does yeah. get to a point where they do believe the lie. Yes. Like 100% yeah. because they're, they're like, it's like anything, the more you practice something, the better you get at it. Yeah. So if you're like, um, like I dated a girl once that um, we'd run into some people and, and they'd be like, oh, you know, um, see you guys for dinner, you know, mm-hmm. next Tuesday or something. Yeah. And Tuesday would roll around and then we'd just be lazy. We'd just be like, you know, yeah. just want to watch TV or something. And she'd, she'd send him a message and like, oh, my tummy's not feeling well. I'm yeah. like, you don't have to lie. Yeah. You know, and it was a constant, <laughs> it was a constant issue, man. I couldn't handle yeah. it. Yeah. Constantly, I constantly fought with her about it because, God damn, you're getting really good at this. Mm. Like, every fucking time, it's a white lie. It's yeah. like, that's... But she was getting a reward for it, right? And that's what I mean by, like, I think there's definitely... So, people that say shit and, you know, if you... Th- uh, going back to if you have the same feeling about it. I don't know if they have the same feeling, but I think they're definitely having some type of rewarding feeling, right? Mm. Like... She told that little white lie, oh, my tummy hurts. And she got out of doing what she wanted and actually got to do what she wanted, which was just chill and hang out with you, right? Yeah. So, like, you do that and you're like, cool, man, if I do this thing, I get this thing that I want. That's what I mean by the reward. Yeah, it's weird though, right? Right? And that's like when you see people that... Um, there's people online, man, that, like, they have made their, I guess, like, celebrity, if you want to call that, by just calling people out on shit mm. to have an argument with them in public. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, to garner the attention. Yeah. I find that funny too, though. I find yeah. that like, <laughs> like comedy. Yeah, man. It is. Because like, yeah. if you know, if you see the pattern and you know yeah. what's happening, yeah, it's funny to you. But certain people but, get like really riled, man. Fuck yeah. Right? And, and yeah. that person knows that. That's why they're doing that. Yeah. To get what they want, yeah. which is that little the engagement like- and that argument or whatever happening so that it like creates that environment and that attention the attention is the reward yeah yeah so, the, the 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 people commenting the likes the dislikes yeah. it's like <clears throat> i've always been a good shit stirrer like, mm-hmm. and in retrospect i'm not so upset with myself about it because i think getting people to talk and think yep. is part of my my thing like mm-hmm. with um with our first design community, like in late nineties, we, um, we had a lot of bylines. We didn't just have one byline. Mm-hmm. Um, we had get involved. We had ask questions. We had, um, have something to say. And a lot of that is like, you could look at them as being quite negative, like have something to say, like it's, it's a bit convoluted, but it's like, yeah. you know, um, it was that encouraging. Yeah. It, it's shit stirring. Mm-hmm. So, you, know, you throw you throw throw something out there and see what happens. Yeah. Um, and I think in doing so, when there's a lot of debate going on, there's a lot of education going on potentially, especially for people who don't contribute and just read it all. Mm. Yeah. Going to learn something yeah. because they're going to be able to go, oh shit, that's a valid point. Yeah. Oh shit, I disagree with that. Yeah. You know, and it starts to form your own opinion. Yeah. So I think shit stirring and all of that stuff to a degree works in certain forums and certain yep. places. But see, the way you're talking about it, like there's a, like you're shit stirring and, and you're kind of provoking people to get a response to then do something with it, right? And, and your, your, your reason sounds a lot more noble to me than like I'm going to poke you Just and trolling. say what... Mm. I know he's going to fucking jab you the wrong yeah, way yeah, yeah, to yeah. get you to arc to up yeah, so yeah, that yeah. I get all these eyes on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very different. I think, I think that, that instance, that's when people post up the icons of popcorn and like, oh, popcorn's out. But they're not learning anything. They're there no. for the slapstick comedy. That's right. Like right? the entertainment of it. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But um, see, going back to like being considerate why you do things, I'm like, not everybody has that understanding. Right. Mm, so mm. like when you do that, certain people, they're not processing it in that way. Mm. And it can be detrimental mm. for them. Mm. It can be detrimental to other people that read it. You might catch someone in a certain point of time where they're like, you know, it's a weird fucking spot. And they take what you said in some weird context and yeah. you know, I'm going down a lot of fucking like yeah, ifs yeah. and what's, but yeah, that's sure. what life is, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ifs and what's. And like yeah, yeah. things just unravel the way they do. Yeah. I I think like 
just our conversation, like, because yesterday I had a conversation with um, Matthew Haynes. He's a, a guy from the design community. Mm-hmm. And before doing the podcast with him yesterday, I watched his previous one. Okay. And it was a, a, a Zoom call split between four people. Yeah. And every time Matt spoke, it sounded like he was wrapping it up. But from the very beginning of the podcast to the very end, okay. he just had this energy that was like every time his mouth opened, it was as if there was a hundred things going in mm-hmm. and it was all trying to come out yeah. at the same time. And it's infectious, that energy, but as someone who's been diagnosed as having being manic, yes. during the podcast yesterday, one of the first things I said to him before I even got a word and he was already, you know, like mm-hmm. angles like, yeah, trying to go back full circle is nearly impossible with this guy. Okay, and I I did say to him yesterday, like, dude, you actually, I don't don't take this in a patronizing or negative way, bro. But I'm like, you sound really manic to me. Okay, you're you're it's manic. That's yeah. mania when you're like, uh, you could just be sitting alone talking to a microphone right now, bro, because you've got so much to say. <laughs> You know, yeah, like, rah, 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 and it's like I can see how people could see that as being wow, yeah. this guy's amazing. He's so infectious. He's like you know, but um, he's completely awake. But it's like he's so emotional. He's so awesome. Like he would start talking about um, uh, Aboriginal rights or something like that, and literally just get emotional about that and that tangent. Okay, we're on this tangent. Yeah, bam, we're on another one, and it's like, um. The way I see it is like there's so many extremists in the world that are doing things that I respect and value. Yeah. But fuck, there's only one of me. And mm-hmm. I can't like chain myself up to that tree in front of that bulldozer to save that tree yep. right now because my God, I'm I'm just working on this little <laughs> little thing over here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but this guy is so open and so passionate about so many things yep. that you can just see it surge through him. So I just wanted to make a comparison of going from that podcast yesterday yeah. to this one with you, mm-hmm. which is very much like us just chilling at the kitchen bench before, yeah. where we are speaking on a on a level that is quite intense. Yeah. But you're not like you're not manic at all. Okay. You're like really <laughs> you're really chill, calm dude. So that's that's an interesting balance because I do wonder about it. Like you and mm-hmm. Leslie do the hustle and flow consistently. Yep. Right? And some days I'll check out your podcast and like my mind is already being opened by some other shitty fucking YouTube videos and I'm yeah. not ready. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> yeah. You know? But at the same time, like, how are you guys able to keep it up, like for a better term? But it's kind of like Thinking openly and big like this, mm-hmm. uh, I'm starting to get worried about it. It's almost like okay. what we talked about earlier. It's like it's getting to a point where maybe I, I do want to have some days where I was like your old self that just maybe I can put... Um, I think I'm talking about routine. I think this is what I'm trying to get to. Okay. It's like, like I've never been good at routine. Mm-hmm. I get the sense that you are quite good at it, though. I'm shit at it. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 Fuck it, that's right. Yeah, that, yeah, no, yeah. I'm starting to get excited about, like, like I read about the guy who runs Twitter, Jack Dorsey. He yeah. has such a routine and mm-hmm. he only eats one meal a day. It's dinner. And yeah. then he was interviewed by Lex Friedman, who's this Russian guy who's in AI, who has the most hardcore daily routine. Like, just watching his video on his daily routine yeah. made me tired. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like... I'll do this for two hours and then I'll do deep thinking for four hours yep. and I'll play the guitar for two hours. Then he's like, I'll go for a run and then he'll, he's just, it's just so hardcore. Mm-hmm. But, um, and he also only eats one meal a day. So I'm starting to think like, fuck, these guys are so successful that routine must be essential in their lives. Yep. And now that I'm like not on drugs, Mm-hmm. And I'm not like, I don't have those um, gray, hazy blocks yep. throughout the day where I'm like, oops, there goes four hours. Mm-hmm. Oops, there goes five hours. Now that I've got 
uh, awareness for those hours, yep. I'm like, holy fuck, a day is long. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I think routine could help yep. in some regards. But, I mean, I was just wondering with you, it's kind of like you seem to not get anywhere near the point of mania, but what you're talking about is potentially quite manic stuff because it's really open. It requires yep. you to be uh, vulnerable and, you know, just mm-hmm. um, guard down yep. a lot. Yeah, it does. Um, and how, how do you deal with it? Because it's like you guys talk about everything. Yeah, we do. We actually we talk about everything. So a couple of things. So like on the routine thing, man, mm. um, I find myself always trying to get into a routine and I never do. I don't know what it is, bro. And, just, and the same as you, like I read about these people and they're like, man, I wake up at 3.37 a.m. and I meditate for this and yeah. then I do my journaling for this and like... Same, dude. I read some of these morning routines and I'm like, I'm fucking tired from <laughs> reading this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just really recently, man, it comes back to this thing of like what you put out and what for, right? Mm. Like if you're running an like a entrepreneurial blog, you're going to write about shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then you see it enough and you're like, that must be the way it is. Mm. But it's not the way it is. Mm. Like it's this little microcosm of that world. Yep which is part of the much, much bigger world. Yep. And um, like the routine thing for me, I, I started to get the point where I'm like, man, you're really crap at making, like at setting a routine and sticking to it. And then everyone tells you that's a problem because they're like, you see all these successful people and they're like, they have a routine, mm. right? But the difference for me is now routine and discipline. I've been able to separate the two. Well, you need discipline to have a routine. Yes, you do need discipline to have a routine, but you don't have to have a routine to be disciplined. No. Okay? No, I'm with you there. Yeah. So, like, discipline um, is essentially, like, you being able to keep the promises you make to yourself. Right? Yep. That's it's how almost like, it. um, for me, the discipline part's quite easy. Yeah. Because it's like a checkbox system, if you want to look at yeah. it. Yeah. So, but I think routine must have something to do with that. Yeah. So I think like discipline helps you get into a routine, but routine doesn't necessarily, sorry. You have to have discipline to have a routine. You don't need to have a routine to be disciplined. I'll tell you what I mean by that. So it's like discipline is essentially as well, apart from like being, keeping a promise to yourself, right? At a very macro level. It's like Mm. giving yourself a command and following through on it. Right. You can do that without a routine. If, yep. Yep. You can be a disciplined person, right? Like I, I consider myself a disciplined person. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. Yep. And that's what that is to me. Mm-hmm. But when I do it, changes all right. the time. Right. And, um, you know, it's just like your breadth of who you listen to, what you take in and, and mm-hmm. how you synthesize it. So I actually listened to a podcast the other day from, by Andy Frizzella, who's someone who I, I've been listening to podcasts for like five years, right? Okay. Super successful dude. He runs like seven companies and... You'd think That's he, crazy. Yeah, already, crazy. Yeah, dude, he must like have a routine of some nine sort. figures. Um, so actually on this podcast, he mm. put out his like, it was about being busy versus being productive. And he's like, you know what, man? Everybody, like you hear all these gurus and they're like, I have this fucking morning routine. He's like, I don't have a fucking morning routine. Okay. Right? That's cool. And it was like, one, I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, I don't it's know. like, okay. Ears <laughs> I was up. like, yeah, I was like, cool. So I don't have to have one. Uh. Right? Because for so, like... Dude, I've been working for myself now for like almost six years. Yeah. So I'm like, sometimes I have a routine, sometimes I don't. But like progressively yeah. things have been getting better. Whereas I'm like, if I had one, would it be way fucking better? That's what I'm curious about. Yeah. I, I, I can't say that like I'm upset with myself. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm curious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So like I actually got to the point where I was like getting upset with myself. I'm like, you're not sticking to this routine. Right. Right. So you tried. I tried. And then for whatever reason, man, like I think the nature of what I've chosen to do. I've got like different businesses. They're in different arenas. I do different Mm. shit. Stuff comes up that's like quote unquote urgent. I have to deal with it then. It changes. Shit happens. Yeah, shit happens, man. It happens all the time. And like, I'm now cool with that. And we're not robots. Yeah. Right. So you get sick, you get sick and your fucking routine goes out the door. But then what? That's right. Mm. And then um, like something comes up during the day. Like I had this whole plan for the day Mm. and then there's this thing that comes up and I have to deal with it for two hours. Yep. 
And now what? Now I'm worried about the routine all the time. Yeah. So like yeah. back to that podcast with Andy, he was like, look, there's a difference between being busy and being productive. Mm. And, and he talks about, he's like, um, everybody wakes up at like 5 a.m. He's like, I don't want to fucking wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I've never woken up at 5 a.m. And I don't plan yeah. to. It's not like... Yeah. I don't want to do, but he, but he does have a system where he's like, which is what I use. It's called the power list. It's like you choose five critical tasks for the day okay. and you make sure you do those five critical tasks. Yeah. It'll, that'll, that'll help you sleep at night. Yeah. Right. At least. Right? You know, doesn't, like, doesn't um, mean you have to do it at a certain time. Yeah. He, he even says, himself, he's like, man, if you do all your five things by 11 o'clock, you fuck off for the rest of the day. Right. That's the bit that I'm struggling with because I'll do those five things. I'm like, yep. that was way too easy. Yeah. So now, okay, I can, I, can, I can afford to do more. Or when he says, fuck off for the rest of the day, I need to learn how to fuck off for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. You That's know? hard. That's because, really hard. Because I'm kind of like so black and white about stuff right now mm-hmm. because I was living in the grave for so long. And now I, I, I feel guilty when I game for an hour or two where I used to fucking do it 10 hours a day. Yeah. Now I'll do it one hour or two hours. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know if this feels good or not. Mm, yeah. And but that- maybe I should learn to... Dude, that's okay. So Watch a bit of TV. Watch, you know, whatever. Yeah. It comes down to like um, this mentality as well that like we always have to be doing something. Mm. Right? This like mm. busyness. Mm. And that's why I brought up that, that contrast, right? Busyness versus productivity. Mm. It's like I was always someone who like I had to be busy. You know what I mean? And I did wear as a badger on a people. How's I fucking busy, bro? Well, you're the hustler, though. So. Yeah, that's right. Right. And see, and, and we'll talk about this as well. It's like the labels people have on you, how that plays on, <clears throat> on your own psyche. Mm. That's interesting to talk about. Yeah, I've because you, a lot that's a label that you put on yourself. That's right. That's right. right. People are like, man, you're always like hustling. You're always grinding. I see you. Like, they're like, I see you, man. You're doing shit. Like, yeah. how's it all going? Is it going well? Blah, blah, blah. Are you and okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, okay, dude, bro? dude, what, what's going yeah. on here? Like, you're, you're producing so much that it's like, man, are you really all right? Yeah. And, and also, it's like a perception people have outside, right? Whereas I'd have days where, um, you know, I'd, I'd do stuff and I'd be like, I didn't really do much. And then people would be like, wow, you did a lot today. And I'm like, I don't really fucking feel like that. But mm. subjective, right? But like um, for me recently, that whole busy versus productive thing, mm-hmm. I'm like, you just need to be productive. Like no one yeah. gives a fuck about how busy you are. No. And I don't think I should give a fuck about how busy I am either. Before I was in this mentality of like action equals results. Mm. And it's not actually the case. Like, we have all these beliefs and shit that we're told, man, mm. that, like, they've just been drilled into us so much that we think that's the way it is. And you stop from them and you're like, hey, wait a minute. Is that right? You're so bang on, man. When someone says to me that they're busy, yep. I never get upset with them. Mm-hmm. If anything, I cheer them on and say, hey, don't worry about it. Busy is good. Yep. But I'm going to stop saying that. You celebrate it, right? Yeah, I'm going to stop saying yeah, that. Because I, I don't it. think bi- they mean that. Mm-hmm. And so I try to flip it and into yep. a positive, but actually, it's it's a lot like they, them saying, "Oh, sorry, I've got no time," and I, I know that people have got time. I yeah, just yeah, know yeah. it, like especially now that I'm not smoking bongs. Like, fuck, I'm, I've got time. So and yep. time is long, so it's not yeah. like this week, next week. Who gives a fuck, right? Next month. That's why routines, are, the the whole thought of routines, always fucked me up. Because what's the difference between a day versus a month? Yeah, it's like. Time, like you guys did a thing about time. Mm-hmm. And time is this thing that, it's just a measure, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just like, I'm on video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drink Can't some water. Can't resist the cuteness. But, um, but yeah, so now like I'm more open to the idea of time being uh, not necessarily anything but just a measure. Yep. And it's just something that I can't get back and it's something that just mm-hmm. expires and then uh, whatever. Meow, yeah, man. You chill. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think... I'm curious about routine, yep. but I'm a really stubborn person too. Yeah. So I think like if I can cull down some stubbornness, I might be more open to yep. trying. You know, like when people say that they run for an hour or two a day, yep. a lot of them, I've, I've heard them say that they fucking hate running. Mm. It, they hate it. They're not looking forward to that routine part of the day. Yeah where they've got to get their short little shorties and runners runners on yep. and just go out and do it, you know. Um, I also know that the surfers down the road, when you speak to them, yep. when it's completely flat out there 
And, you know, you ask the wrong question. The first stop, you're like, oh, so it's pretty flat out there, no waves. And they're like, mm. you don't get it, mate. Yeah. And it took me a while to get it. The thing is, as a surfer, you look out the window, it's flat as fuck today, it doesn't matter. Get into that fucking wetsuit, yep. paddle out, get wet. Yep. Because if you stop doing that, you break the routine. Mm. Next thing you know, you're not surfing anymore. Yeah. Yes. So, so that's interesting because... Right. Yeah. So like maybe people listening to us right now, they think like, oh, this guy thinks routine is bullshit or it doesn't work. Far from it. It does work. <clears throat> I just haven't figured out how to hone same, it yet. Same. And it sounds like you're the same, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'd like to give you an example, um, like my partner, dude, she gets up every day at like five something, mm-hmm. trains every day. It makes it feel good and it's working for loves her. Loves it. Loves it. And dude, having that routine for her yeah. is like she loves it. Yeah. Right? And, and what I'm getting at is like we're all different. Yeah. But like uh, I look at that and it, and it does a lot for her. Yep. It's something she looks forward to. She knows she's got that time. She's blocked it out. Yep. She's doing it then so she knows she can do other things later. Uh, she's healthy. Yep. You know, like she's doing something she enjoys every day. A lot of us don't take the time to actually schedule in things we like. We always do things mm. we think we should do mm, 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 over mm, things, mm. over things that we want to do, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and there's also on the flip side things that we know are going to be good for us, mm. which maybe we should schedule time for. Well, you could start we stuff. Maybe maybe a lot of people have a hard time starting something yep. because um, I know now that I'm more capable. Like it's been maybe. Four months now where yeah. I haven't slept with the mobile phone next to my bed mm-hmm. because what I found myself doing, which is probably what everyone does, yeah. get up in the morning, reach for it yes. straight away. So I look at that as it's, it's more of a choice and starting something different than a routine. Mm-hmm. But I don't think a routine might be too different from that. Yeah. It's like making that decision mm. to try something. Yes. And then from there... See what happened because because you know then then I'd have it in the kitchen, but then the routine changed from grabbing the phone first thing in the morning to making a beeline straight to the fucking kitchen for it. No, I'm like no, do a piss. Yep. Wash your face, brush your teeth, then go and check it. Yeah. Then I was like, okay, now I'm gonna do those three things. Then I'm gonna make a coffee, mm-hmm. and then while the water was boiling, I'm on it. Now, no. It's only a minute, Justin. Yeah. Wait for the water to boil. Make your coffee. Then check your phone. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's sitting a bit better now. Yeah. yeah so man. building a routine but in a different way. or Yeah, and, and you've got to build one that works for you, mm, right? Mm, so like mm, mm. Um, there are definitely things though that I do every day. Yeah. Right? Yeah, same. Um, and that is routine. Yeah. That's yeah, routine. And discipline. And, and discipline. Bo- yeah, both, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the value of routine is in the consistency and your persistence. Yeah. Right. And, and it might take... A, the weird thing is it might take you a while to realize if it's good for you or yep. not. That's, yep. that's interesting, you know? Yeah, man. For like, sure. Um, Another thing though, like you asked me, like how do I say regular on the podcast? Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Straight up, man. Mm. That is like Les. He's... And? He's gunning it. Um, no, the, the, yes, he is, 100%. Mm. But more for me, it's about like keeping my commitment. mm to what I agreed on. That's cool. Right? So, like, that's how I stay consistent. But you obviously get something... Like, I get so much out of these podcasts because um, mind is open, yep. guard is down, yep. uh, in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know. We've got no notes. Don't yep. know what's... I love that. Yeah, me too, you man. Know? Me and too. And no idea yep. where it might go. No idea about how it could affect me going forwards. Yeah. Because, you know, you could be sitting there planting so many seeds that won't come into fruition maybe until next month, next year, who knows? But I'll be, ah, you know? Totally, man. Um, yeah. That's, that's okay. my favorite part and my, like, driving force to do podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is, like, is those nuggets, man. It's what you get out of it's, it, yeah. you know. It's nice if other people can mm. as well. But it's, yeah. it's, 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 for me, it's like, it sounds really cheesy, but it is a pay it forward. Because yeah. I've been listening to podcasts consistently for like the last six years. Yeah, okay. And dude, there's been so many moments that I've listened to a podcast. Yeah. It's been prolific for me and it's changed something for me. Like Even shifted that one me. little thing. One little thing, dude. Yeah. And I've had people say it to me from listening to the podcast as and I do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And 
I just love that. Yeah. Like that is all it needs to do, man. Yeah. All it needs to do. Yeah. People ask ask me all the time, they're like, oh, so like what are you gonna what are you doing with the podcast? Like what's the goal with it? I'm like, personally, I don't have a goal with it. Yeah. And I'm a really like essentially like goal driven person. How I look at goals has changed over time now. Yeah. We could talk about that if you want. But like mm. usually I've been like, if I do something, it needs to have a result. Mm. Like I'm doing this for this. Mm. I'm doing that for that. Yep. Whereas like the podcast for me, I was like, this is the experience I've had from podcasts. People have said things and it's changed things for me. It's changed yep. my perspective on it. Yep. So we'll be having a conversation. Someone may have listened to the episode we did together mm-hmm. and they saw themselves in you. They saw yourselves in Les or they saw something in what I said. Yep. And then they think about it and it yep. changes their trajectory. Look, I, I definitely am with all of that. Yep. But a part of me is kind of like... I would like to I can't I just can't help it. Yep. If I have if I have like if I'm gonna inspire people, I'd rather inspire a whole class of people, mm-hmm. which I used to do like design talks and stuff like that, rather than just the one person. Yeah. So part of me is like people are like, Don't sweat the views, Justin. I get that yep. in the comments a lot. Don't sweat the views, man. Like, you know, you get there or whatever. But I'm kinda like, mm, I that that I've always looked at that feedback that you get and people saying stuff yeah. about how that podcast helped them to figure something out or mm-hmm. whatever. I do look at that as the payment. Yeah. So while I'm not like, you know, trying to be like money Mayweather and like money, 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 money. Yeah, like yeah. for me, the money is the feedback. So yeah. I want I'm sitting there screaming like feedback, feedback, feedback. I want more of it. Yeah. So definitely is a part of me that's like, mm, I do get something out of it. Yep. Personally, doing uh, podcasts and stuff, but I do want more views. Yeah, I know it's going to bring the trolls and the haters too. I, I'm totally, totally mm-hmm. ready for that. Yeah, but I just like part of me is like, yeah, I probably wouldn't have cared at all for mm-hmm. ages. Yep, but now that I'm straighter than ever, I kind of like, hmm, maybe I can use some of that, you know, marketing and advertising background to like actually get more views and. You know, I've got some money right now. Yeah. Kind of like, fuck. Um, rather than putting it into my GTR to get that back on the road for an event next month, mm-hmm. maybe I can advertise this. Yeah. You could, man. So you I'm... Could. And you, it's just... Sticking. Dude, mm. if that's important to you and mm. you've identified that, you know, that feedback is the payment and that's what you want, mm. which is totally cool. Mm, 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 that's mm. what you put into. Mm, for mm. me, the way I view it, <clears throat> which is why I'm cool for like, no matter how many views it is, yep. is... I've seen just time and time again my own experience and, and, you know, what I've seen in others. Something might shift in that conversation. Seven people watched it. Yeah. It shifts for that one person. What that person goes on to do yeah. could affect thousands of people. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. Right? And, and, like, it sounds really like pie in the sky shit. And it is. But I've seen it, dude. I've seen it happen. Yeah, me too. Like one person that you invest... I, I've definitely had some people that are super successful today say that I spent 10 minutes with, with them once upon a time. Yep. I didn't remember because I met so many people like yeah, when man. I was running this or that. Yep. But like, fuck, I just sit there to myself. When they say stuff like that, I sit there to myself and go, fucking thank God you weren't having a grumpy day that day. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. thank yep. God. Because surely there's some people that I'm just, I'm too busy, I'm working, yep. or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't talk to everybody, mm. so... Yeah, that, that's definitely one of those little reminders of like treat everyone as an equal. It's like it's going back to what we were talking about before. Yep. You're trying not to patronize people. Yeah. When, you're, when you're trying to inspire someone to try not to patronize. Yeah. It's something that I'm more aware of now than ever. And another thing is like all these people, you know, and it seems like a huge topic, right, where everyone's fucking so unhappy in their work, right? They're so like hate their jobs or whatever. You know, you and I work for ourselves and... It's like one, one or the other, really, unless you can pull off part-time, which I think part-time is great. Three days on or four days on and three days off. In terms of like that Zen balance in life, yep. it's better than a five-day working week and two days off. There's no mm-hmm. fucking balance in that whatsoever, right? Because mm-hmm. yep. you know what it's like. People on Friday are like, oh, um, already thinking of the weekend. And on Sunday, people are like, oh, fuck, I've got to work tomorrow. Yeah, so man. that's... <laughs> Fucks already. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I, 
have been thinking that maybe trying to inspire people to take a risk, like the Jordan Peterson thing of like take a risk yep. now, mm-hmm. a small risk, quit your job, and then that way you're not looking back at a 10-year unhappiness in a job and realizing you took a fucking huge risk yep. in spending 20 years in a job and you fucking lost all that time. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of that going out there. And it's almost like that um, unresolved issues thing. Yes, they're highlighting something that's making you unhappy, but yeah. they're not exactly telling you how to do it. How to do it. Yeah, man. Right? So then like I've been on that a little bit of that rampage because I'm sick of p- hearing people complain, especially on, on my Discord channel. Like, you know, fucking today was shit and every day is the same. Yeah. So it's like I've been a little bit on that, but then I just thought, fuck. There's something to be said about like a quiet taste, right? There's something to be said about like, you know, the first time I had sashimi, I probably didn't like it. Or the mm. first time I had my first fucking bit of, you know, ramen, I might not have liked it. Or first time I tried skateboarding, I was shit. Or yep. there's something to be said for, you know. Acquiring a taste. Takes a while to get good yeah, at something. Man. Takes a while to love something. For sure. So um, then getting people to maybe stay in their jobs yep. and then learn how to enjoy it instead might actually be better advice than fucking quit your job. 100%. Take a risk. Dude, this whole thing as well of like you having to love everything you do mm. is a bullshit concept. Of course. Right? Um, also, there's certain practicalities to life. Some people have responsibilities they need money for. And if you go out and start a business where you just watch butterflies and take videos of you watching butterflies, maybe people don't want to see that shit. You love it, yeah. right? But like, and then there's people like, oh yeah, but you can always find a way to monetize everything. And you can, but mm. you need to work up to build those skills. And what are you mm. doing in that time? Mm. If you've got, you know, financial responsibilities and things. Mm. <clears throat> there's also this thing now, man, of like having to go all in on everything. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, a lot of people feel like they have yeah, to. And no, you, you don't. Can, you can just pick away a couple of hours a day and That's start right. something. You can do two things at once. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, people have time. It's a go, going back to that. You, you do, man. You do have time. You I do did have time, yeah. like nowhere near this like uh, level of effort as I do now. But like, man, my business, mm. I used to work full time mm. in a corporate career that took more than full time hours. And I did my business on the side. Yeah. And then I transitioned at one point. I did make the choice to jump. But dude, I did it for three years. That's, that's because you were setting up an escape plan, right? That's what, that's what they call it. They call it like when, you, when, you're, when you're unhappy in your job and you spend like one or two hours a day on a passion project, yeah. potentially that passion project could be your escape route. For me, it wasn't like that though. No? No, man. So I totally get that. Yeah. It's like test it out, right? See if it's, it's like, going to... Looking for a way out of something. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, in the jail, so you start picking away. Yeah, bro. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll start to get up. If, there's a, if I see a hole on the other side, maybe then I'll start punching a bit harder, right? Yeah. But it's like, for me, dude, I just saw an opportunity that yep. came up out of doing something that I liked at the time, yep. right? Which was like um, in fitness, Yep. right? I, I just started getting into my nutrition and supplements and stuff like that. People in the office I was working at saw that I was getting good results doing what I was doing and they were like... Mm started to see I would get supplements delivered to the office, uh, right? Okay, nice. And then... Well, you like, created that opportunity by starting something. Yeah, well, you know, what, what happened was... don't just come. Yeah, but what happened was, man, is like people said, went, oh, what should I be eating? How should I be training? And then they're like, oh, I see you get supplements delivered here. Next time you get supplements, can you get some stuff for me? And I'm like, there's a business in this. Yeah, yeah. So then, dude, that's how I started. There was a guy mm. that I was friends with at the time in that office as well. Mm. Um, we were both into our fitness. I was like, do you want to do this? He's like, yep, sounds cool. And dude, we just started that way. I just opened wholesale accounts with like existing brands. Yep. And it was just like friends and family that I was yep. selling supplements to. Yep. But uh, that, you created those, those opportunities though. That's yes. the thing. Like, yeah. you know, if you um, are just stuck in a rut, yep. no opportunities are going to come. No, you know? but at that point, like I was cool with what I was doing as my job. Mm. Well, I thought I was, right? Mm, 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 and then mm. I kind of just to expose myself to something else and I saw another, another way. And then my circumstances changed. Yeah. And what I was doing, I wasn't liking it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And different opportunities came up through my own business. Yeah. Right? Which I chose to take a risk on and actually, truth be told, fucking fell over and failed for me. But I was already out. 
Mm. So then I had to adjust and, and work that out. Mm. Um, but for me, it wasn't an escape plan. It was just I did two things at once. Yep. An opportunity came up through one of them. I chose that over the other. Mm-hmm. And then I rolled with it. I just rolled with it, bro. I and, like that though. You know, yeah. That's cool. Like um, sometimes it's manifestation. Sometimes it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's a word, anti-manifestation because I find that when I get cocky and confident about uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I've been talking a little bit about how I was upset when Zen Garage got really big and a whole lot of people were buying it but not knowing why they were buying it. It was okay. just because it was big, right? It's like yeah. that bandwagon jumping mm-hmm. thing that we were talking about earlier. It's like the cool thing to have. Right. Yeah. So it was just flying out. Like yeah. I never expected to be a T-shirt salesman, but like holy shit, right? <laughs> it just got yeah. out of control. And, um, and I've been every now and then, whenever I get the chance to drop that, like right now, I'll drop it and I'll just say like, I'm really happy with the brand right now because mm-hmm. people who buy it know exactly what the brand is because yep. it's not in the spotlight at all, mm-hmm. you know? And um, just last week, after mentioning it multi- multiple times on podcasts, on social media, a friend of mine who used to live here and now lives in Colombia, she watched um, one of my podcasts and said, Justin... I love all the Zen gear that you gave me. I can't stop wearing it. Yeah. Everyone in Colombia loves it too. Um, and again, she's the perfect idea of the brand. I liked her as a human being. Here, take all this Zen gear because okay. I know you're going to represent it well. Yep. So I was, I, I've been giving it away. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, her business is to be in touch with China manufacturing. And what she does for people in Colombia is like, you want a waffle maker, you want a beanie, whatever. Yeah. Fun. How do you want it? She does all the um, design and then send it over and get quotes and then gets it all done. Okay. Dispatch as well, storage, everything. Yep. So I'm getting hit by sun. But she's, right. um, she, she literally just goes, I want to start Zen in Colombia and I want to join forces with you and we'll make all your products. Um, I'll store it all and dispatch it for you as well globally. Okay. And I'm just like, fuck, there I am saying I'm happy with it. Mm-hmm. But then opportunity. Yeah, man. And it's just like that's how it happens. <clears throat> it is how it happens. Whether you positively manifest it or not, if you're saying something or publishing something about it, yep. opportunities yeah. most likely will present themselves to you. Yeah, man. But if it's just in here, yep. you've got to do your, something about it. If it's just it. in your notepad, yeah, dude, you, you have to do something about it. You have to, right? you have to publish. Yeah. You have to get it out there. Yeah. And, and that's the so. only way shit does happen. Like they call it, you got to have the fair to ride the bus. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, you got to yeah. have done things to have the ability, like you put the brand out, you've done apparel, you've done all these things. Mm. You mm. gave her the stuff because you thought she was a good fit. Mm. And then opportunity. And, you know, that's the thing. Like I haven't said yes to her. Like, yeah. um, you know, I thought about it and I'm like, she wanted me to give her all the size specs of the apparel and yep. um, uh, all the materials. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want it to be the same. If that's the case, I'll make the sleeves a little bit shorter. Um, I'll make everything fucking 100% cotton. None of this plastic shit, like cutting corners here <laughs> and there. Yeah. I'll go like the hoodie can be double the thickness. Mm-hmm. Maybe get a custom black zipper with a logo on the actual you know, the, the little... On the tang. Yeah. So it's like little things like that. It's like, fuck, if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to make it worse. I'm going to make mm-hmm. it better. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to reduce the range from like 10, 15, 20 things down to like five products. Yeah. You know, um, just letting her know. She goes, that's all fine. It's your business. I just want to be like the person that gets it going again. And I don't want to be part of your... Um, Business venture, I'm like, fucking thank God because like I've had business partners that I've bought <laughs> out. I don't need another business partner again and have that drama, you know? Yeah, yeah. So m- probably work on like a profit split or something like that. But mm-hmm. um, it's just weird, bro. It's just yeah. weird how it happened. <laughs> it is just strange how yeah. opportunities. So, yeah, man. Yeah. But like um, I am a big believer in like law of attraction, mm. manifestation. Yeah, yeah, me too. And, yeah. and um, man, the, the things we focus on are the things we get. Yeah. It's, it's the same that, like, if we keep thinking about something going wrong, it goes wrong, man. Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What do they call that? Um, it's like, it, it, it's, it's something to do with that um, 
It's not positive manifestation. It's the other way around. It's like, I forget what the term is. But it's like, you're right. If you, if you do say something like, oh, yeah, I have no time, I have no time, it is casting a negative yeah. manifestation on yourself and basically saying that you are just refusing to prioritize something and yeah. that's why you're saying that. Well, what we focus on grows. Mm. It does, right? That's why when you give your attention to something, it can flourish mm. because you're giving your attention, your effort over to it. If you give that same focus and attention to something you don't want to happen, you're still focusing on it. You're giving it attention. You're putting effort towards it. Mm. That's giving it energy. It's giving it life. It's what's going to come, come yeah. to fruition. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, man, what, what we focus on comes to be. It's, it's as simple as that, man. Like, Focus on and actually put energy into. And I think publishing is a big deal, man. Like mm. as, as an artist, it's always been like you need to get it out. Putting shit out is a massive deal, dude. It is, yeah. And like, you know, when you asked me about routine Mm. and like how do you do it consistently and I said, oh, that's Les. It's because like Les, um, when we started, so the the way our podcast started was literally Les and I, you know, like Les Les is my brother, bro. And we've been best friends for a long time. And we just have gone through our own journeys and we always talk. Yep. And we'd have these conversations Mm -hmm. and... At the end of them, sometimes I'd be like, fuck, man, that was good chat. We should record these. Oh, I, th- I feel like that every time right? I hang out with my mates, hey? Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah. that's how we felt about it. Yeah, yeah. And we said it enough times and then Just Les went out and bought microphones. Yeah, okay. Okay? <laughs> I didn't buy fucking microphones. Les bought the microphones. <laughs> yeah. And then he set it up and then he was like, oh, let's do this, man. I was yeah. like, yeah, cool. And the first time I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> like, because I'm not used to, sp- wasn't then used to speaking like, on something recorded, going yep. out, all that shit. Yeah. And then um, he's like, how often do you want to do this? Yeah. And then I was like, cool, man. He's put in effort. I want to match the effort. So I was like, let's do it every week. Yep. That's how we started. Yep. And then he's like, when should we do it? Mm. We had to carve out a time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Put that in the calendar. Mm-hmm. That calendar does not change. Mm-hmm. So that, going back to the discipline thing, that's my discipline. Bit of routine too. And the routine. Yeah. And that's why routine is very helpful. Mm. We're in a routine now of like we've got set times in our calendar Mm -hmm. that are like, dude, I don't book anything over that. And it's good stuff. It's good energy, good times. Yeah. That's it. Like I know like every fucking week at that time that I may be recording a podcast. Yeah. And that's it. And we've put that in the calendar and we've agreed on it. Mm -hmm. Right. So like that keeps me consistent. Yeah. And I don't take it out because Les and I have agreed on that. Yeah, right. Uh, it, a ca- you said the word calendar is so important too because I only started use, using a calendar uh, last year. Okay, so yep. it's helped a lot. Yeah, man. But I still have to remember to fucking check it. But it's still yep. like it helps a lot. But um, some of it's like a lack of growing up too. Like I'm mm-hmm. I'm still a big kid. So yep. Like uh, this morning I woke up at five thirty or six in the morning because I heard the garbage truck pass my house. I'm like, okay. fuck! I forgot to take the bins out again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like. Yep. Man, it's like I did four loads of washing the other day. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, and why do I do this to myself? Yeah. Yeah. So there's still like maybe on the surface, some people will yeah. go, fuck, you know, you got your shit together and fuck, you know, yeah, all man. this kind of shit. But it's like, man, everyone's got like everyone's, yeah, got, everyone's their got their thing. This, yeah. <laughs> everyone's got their thing. Like, <laughs> man, I do the same. Like there's some things that I just put off and then I batch it all and exactly the same. I'm like, why don't I just do this? Mm. But then there's other things I do consistently that people are like, how do you do that consistently? Yeah. And like, I'm no stranger to routine and habit and stuff. Mm. Um, you know, I've had periods in my life where I've been like super strict on things, mm. right? Like um, on my training, on my nutrition, weighed my food, everything, like ate at a certain time, all that. And, and it got great results for me. But life changes, man. Yeah. Things change. Yeah, Your happens. circumstances change. Like, yeah. um, but there is definitely something to be said about routine and consistency mm. and putting things out, which is like how we got back onto that. Mm. And, you know, uh, by actually recording the, pod, the conversation, giving a name to the podcast, putting yeah. it out on social, yeah. now it's out. People are expecting yeah. that every week. And yeah. because they're expecting that every week, we produce every week. Yeah, well, you, got, you guys did the smart thing, which is what you're meant to do, create multiple issues beforehand so that you've got a little bit of buffer. Yep. You know, like, that's the smart thing. Like, I'm just like, Bruh, whenever, like, this will go up tomorrow. And that's yep. just like, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's how I'm doing it. But yep. um, 
like I know if I did do do it more consistently, yeah. it would be better. Mm-hmm. But I, it's, I'm just a stubborn fuck, man. Yeah. I just like part of me is just like, well, that's just that's just the way I am. And that can so. be you, dude. Yeah, yeah that can yeah. be you. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. from my experience now, though, mm-hmm. because Les is someone who's really helped me with uh, sticking to times for things. Mm-hmm. Because before, I also have this belief that I can do anything. Right. I really believe that. Mm-hmm. And things always work out. They do. Mm. Mm. Maybe not how you thought they would, but they work out. They work out, yeah. And I've always had that belief of like, I'll sort it out. Well, you're, you're, that's positive mindset. Yep. You have a positive, you have a really good vibe, man. Like that's the thing. Like when I, Thanks, man. Um, when I hopped on that podcast with you the yep. first time, I'd never met you before at all. Mm-hmm. So that podcast really helps me to get back on my feet because I was pretty open with you guys. Yeah. But I was comfortable Mm-hmm. With you being on that podcast, it wasn't just Leslie and I. Yeah, you know, I known Leslie for a while, mm. so that was mad. Like I just loved your vibe. Thanks. And then bro. when I met you in real life, I was still in a really shit place, mm-hmm. but totally happy to just hang out and talk shit. So, so when you reached out to do a podcast, I'm like, it makes perfect sense. Like I actually think that our um, our cadence yep. is more similar than Leslie and I. Okay. So not to say anything negative about Leslie and I, but it's yep. like Leslie's. There's this really deep and deeper and more that whole like um, has that Zen Buddhism vibe. Yep. And um, he's very assuring, mm-hmm. which I love about him. Yep. But I think you have a more like you do, you do go to say that you guys are, are, are different and that's why you're doing the podcast because yep. you come in at a different. And I do see that. Like in the beginning, I thought there's no difference here. You guys are both just open minded um, conscious people Yeah But Over time I see that you guys Are really different mm. Like Leslie's definitely uh, This Spiritual um, But then again the, the other day I listened to something That he did And he was yep. swearing Every third word I'm like <laughs> Wow <laughs> Leslie He was like Fucking 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 F word F bombs yeah, everywhere I'm like shit Yeah Shit, he can, he can get worked up too. But hey, still. He can. He definitely can, bro. <laughs> He's got it in him. And uh, I think like none of us are just one thing, you know? Yeah. Like uh, I guess when we do the podcast, we kind of, we paint ourselves into these roles, like the hustle and the flow. Yeah. But like Les hustles. Yeah. Bro, he hustles. Like yeah. he can put out, like his output, excellent. Like yeah. if he wants to do something, he'll do it. Yep. He'll get it out. Yeah. And it'll be at a very good, good level. Um. And on the flip side, man, like for me, I don't like hustle my dick off every fucking second of every day. Like mm. I've mm. learned flow from him. Yeah. And I got flow on me, man. Like sometimes I just get into the zone of stuff. Yep. Some, now I choose not to do things like be like, I have to work 27 hours fucking day, get this cranking. If I'm not working, I'm not moving. Like, no, like it's changed for me. You're, like, you're easier on yourself about that shit yeah, too man. probably, you know? Yeah. I think that, that, I think that mm. is part of like self-acceptance. And, yeah. You know, like you're obviously happy with who you are. That's yes, the thing. I am now, man. And yeah. I wasn't for a long time. Mm. But um, yeah, dude, I think like labels is an interesting thing. The ones we put in ourselves, the mm. ones we put in other people and then them trying to live up to them. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like that's, that's what makes people worry though. That's the thing. Like I have this um, just from speaking to you today, mm. I have this feeling like it's such, such a, it's such a, um, a sense of confidence that if you're out there in this world and there's shit happening around you, whether when you leave this house or whether you're halfway home or whether it's overseas or something, I have this like sense of comfort knowing that you who you are will be fine (laughs) in any situation. It's a confidence that I have. It's like how you carry yourself will be fine in front of all walks of life. Whether okay. it's someone trying to threaten your life, I think you would react the way you would react. And whether it's someone that you meet that needs some help, I think it's almost like this yeah. feeling of you're a good human. Tick. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Go That's out like in the that. world and just rock it. And yeah. I feel like I don't have to worry like I like I like that. Like I think like, you know, like we talked about there's different levels in life and everyone's at a different level of um logic and yep. living and understanding. But when 
when you get to a point in life where you can quite distinctly see that there are some people in your life that are friends that you worry about, Mm -hmm. it's really nice to have friends that you don't have to worry about. (laughs) That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like... I appreciate that. No, no, for sure, man. It's just like just from just talking to you today. Like I just know that you'd be fine, you know. It's not like I have a house party and I'm looking at my groups of friends and I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm really worried Sean might not, you know, get along with some of these guys. <laughs> like, fuck, you know, don't have to worry about you. That's, that, it, it's just a nice it's just a nice place to be, to have friends that you don't have to worry about. Yeah, and that's so. nice to hear, man. No, yeah, it's cool, yeah. bro. It's just the vibe that I get, man, you know? Yeah, and um, dude, I think like I'm just one thing that has served me well, bro, to be that way that you're perceiving me is like, mm. I do think everything's just going to be okay, man. And yeah, we'll yeah, work yeah, it yeah. out. That's what, yeah, like, yeah. I think we all have that capacity, mm. just whether we do it. And, and don't get mm. me wrong, man. Like, I'm not some super zen dude, super calm all the time. I get, like, yeah. really fired up. Yep. I, um, I worry about shit. Yep. I've just tried to learn these ways to curb it. Yeah. And more than anything, like, be an observer of myself. It's acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're not hypercritical of yourself and... When you do step wrong, you don't like beat yourself up about it. Yeah, man. You yeah. Know? I used to do that a lot. Mm. And then I saw where it got me, man. Mm. And it was not liking who I was. And you don't want to go there again. No, so man, you I know don't. not to. I don't. Yeah. And like, I, I don't peg my worth on like what other people think of me anymore. I did that for a long time. Yep. And to be honest, that's been very recent for me. That's a big one. Yeah. People but, talk about that all the time. Yeah, man. And I, I think it's one of those things like we all talk about it all the time. Mm. But when you feel it, it's mm. so different, bro. Mm. Mm. Like mm. I can feel the energy in me change when I said that because I feel it now. Yeah, and and I like I honestly wish it for everyone. Yeah, um, it, yeah, same. Obviously, like you, you know, the amount of um, lack of self acceptance people have for it, yeah. for for themselves is savage. It's it is savage, it's crazy, man. dude. It's like and it's fair too, though, because we're being bombarded, man. <laughs> like we're being yep. attacked. Uh, from so many more viewpoints and yep. psychologically and physically and everything, it's just savage now. Yeah, it's savage now. You know, not not so not for everyone. Like if you, but if you live in a city yeah. and you're connected, yeah, dude, then you're you're basically like living in the busiest, craziest times ever. Totally. In but, terms of the distractions and things that just zap your energy. Yeah, but it all boils down to like how you look at yourself, because mm. even when like someone says something about you or you Mm. think they see you in a certain way, you're thinking that, you're Mm. processing that and then casting that upon yourself. It's only human, right? Right, it is. Um, For me, man, I've just chosen to take like radical self-responsibility and people talk about it and and when I heard that, it resonated with me. I'm like, everything's my fault. It is. Taking responsibility. Yeah, man, like everything's my fault. Like if I'm in a situation, something happens, people are like, oh, but that guy smashed into your car. I'm like... I was there, bro. Interesting. I chose to be there. Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah, it fucking sucks. Mm. Not ideal. Mm. Right? I'm aggravated my car's there, but I'm like, I was there. Mm. Maybe if I wasn't, it wouldn't happen. It's kind of like that two to tango kind of thing. Like yeah. it's, it's not just somebody else's fault. That, that's it. Like yeah. I have a part to play in this. Yeah, that's and interesting. That's, it's, liberating, like that. dude. it's liberating, dude. Yeah. It's liberating because mm. it gives me a sense of control in my life. Yeah. Right? Because there's things, you know, we all talk well, about like there's a lot, so many things out of your control and like, but controlling but, like, your emotions yeah. at least, like, especially. That's right. Control's not a bad thing, man. Mm, mm, right? Mm, it's mm, not mm, a bad thing. Mm, it, it gets mm. this bad rap. It's one of those words, you know, mm. that has like a negative connotation on it. People are like, oh, you're a control freak. Yeah. I'm like, people that learn how to control things are powerful people, bro. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And right? No matter how small it is, it's so long as it's, um, yeah, it's definitely not a negative word, but you're right. It has yeah. a negative connotation. It, it, it does. For sure. Like, um, and you, you mentioned controlling your emotions. Mm. That's a power to me, man. Mm. Mm. It's mm. powerful to be able to not mm. be like swept away by your emotions all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you see, that's the thing. Like I think when, when I was losing my marbles, I will, that's what would happen, right? Like mm-hmm. I'd literally like, you know, put on a song and cry guaranteed to that song so what yep. i would do is put it on again and again and i would okay so i now know that like uh coming off the meds and deciding to do so one of my first concerns in my head was um does this mean that without the medication 
I'm now going to have high highs and low lows again. Mm-hmm. Like I instantly just, my brain just spat that out and kept, just kept asking myself and yeah. shit, do I have to worry about getting that low again to a point where, you know, I don't see any reason to go on. Mm-hmm. And then now that I'm really off the meds, like four months in, I'm like, it can't happen because I put myself there. I remembered how much I needed to do drugs wise to yeah. get that bad. Okay. Like, there's no way I can do that again. Yeah. But do you know <laughs> how powerful it is that you, you realize that? Not even realize that you took the time to think about it and acknowledged it. Mm. Like, mm. dude, that's super powerful. It's just taken me time. Yeah. Like, super to be powerful. scared first. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. But you've taken that responsibility. Get, I don't want to get depressed again. I don't yeah. want to, like, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, Cry over music anymore and all that kind of shit. I'm fucking not crying right now. Yeah, just <laughs> you just choked on the one. Just, I just choked. Yeah, I just choked. But um, okay. but like, yeah, that realization now that like to get as bad as having <clears throat> no motivation, no reason to wake up, no no desire to be on the planet anymore. Yeah. To get there, I had to work my ass off to get there. Yeah. And I'm only just realizing it like recently where. Shit, Justin, don't worry. You're not going to get there like that. Yeah. You're going to have to work your ass off to get that yeah. bad again. And you're going to have to make choices and do things to get there. It's just impossible. Right. In my mind now, it is impossible. Yeah. Um, even if a friend or family or my cat died, yeah, I'm going to go through depression. But to get to where I was before, yeah, that was on purpose. That was absolutely... Uh, ridiculous yeah. and i did it to myself for sure so yeah. and you've taken responsibility for it and yeah, now yeah. in doing that you understand that right that Never you're in again. control of it yeah, yeah and you yeah, won't yeah, do yeah, it yeah. again yeah oh, no, which, it, which will it, serve you it can't happen again. yeah i just know it it's a sense of knowing it's like yeah. i don't know what to say it's like i know it yeah so when people are kind of like uh, when people are kind of like feeling that way um as cheesy as it is i know there's a way out mm-hmm. um but I don't know. I don't know what, what I'm exactly what I'm trying to say here. It's almost like I don't think. I think what I'm more trying to say is like if you have come out of it, there are those cheesy sayings like, "Yeah, whatever you conquer will only make you stronger," right? Yeah. But to not really understand what you conquered would be a real shame, mm. because I do see a lot of people going in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah. But I don't understand how because I'm like, once you've gone down there, if you straighten up right, there's no way you'd go back down there. It's sort of what I'm trying to say. It's like yeah. the, it's in, it's impossible for me to go back there. I just wouldn't be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it sounds like maybe you've understood like what it takes to get there and you know that you have the power and the choice to either get there or not. And you're choosing not to. I, I Would think, that be fair to say? I think I've, I think I've patched it up right. I haven't just put like a bandaid over it. I haven't yeah. just done a that'll do job. Yeah. You know, or the, you know, the. No offense to anyone who's still on the meds. Yeah. But the amount of people that reach out to me concerned when I was blogging about like getting off this shit. Yeah. So many people said, "Just you're not meant to do that, Justin. You're meant to go to the doctors. They're meant to, you know." Maybe get you on another medication that's not as strong and then slowly over time, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I've just always wanted to get off that shit. So I sort of was doing that myself anyway, Mm -hmm. reducing the the amount, right, of of the the dosage. But um, like when I was really blogging about it just like five months ago, people were like, Justin, just just take the small pill. It's just a small pill, Justin. If it makes you normal and... Happy normal. What the fuck's normal? Yeah, I know. But this is the thing, like, because they were just think, justifying it to themselves. Yeah, correct. Like, that's. I don't mean to be patronizing here. I'm trying yeah, yeah, my best here. I'm trying my best to not I, step you, on toes. You're not right? coming across that way to me. But, you know, I'm yeah. just trying my. Uh, every everyone's different. Yeah. Like, maybe they do need that one yeah. little pill, but for me, it was kind of like I couldn't accept that, and mm. thank goodness. I got off it because I wouldn't be here talking to you yeah. and doing this shit and feeling this way if I accepted that this little thing was what I needed to just like be to stop having the low lows. Yes. You know? Yeah. So I think 
that's what I mean by maybe a lot of people go up and down because they never really fixed it. They never really yeah. went up. They I just kind of, I don't know. I have a theory on that. And that I think you never fixed it because you didn't actually, you haven't understood that it's in your power to fix it. Like you, like you're going to do it. The pill is not doing it. No. <clears throat> you and how you are on the pill is doing it. Or, or the, the therapist the th- or the... Yeah, like the things you are doing, mm. the choices you are making in, are, are what are uh, unraveling the life before you. It's like, it's like being in a state of having no denial. It, it, it's, like yes. you, it's like everyone knows, but to face it, yep. to really fucking face it, like really absolutely face that I'm lying to myself, yes. then that's, that's what, what I had to is, do. Dude. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that is. That, acknowledging yeah, that's what I'm at. I yeah. am like this, yeah. Yeah. but I can do something about it. Or at least try Exactly. At least try. And trying is doing something. Yeah. It is doing it is, something. It is, yeah. It right? Is, it is, This yeah. whole like do or yeah. do not, I don't believe in that. Yeah. Like trying is an action. The, the levels of it are different. Totally. Like if you say, yeah, I'm trying, but you're not really. Yeah. You're not trying. But you, you well, that's what, what I mean like, by it. It's not the cheesy like there's light at the end tunnel or, you know, yeah. you can do this. It's, it's not that. It's just that it really, there really is. But... How you get there, it, it, sure, it's different for everyone. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. like, it's like that thing again. Like a lot of people will focus on, well, this is the issue, but the resolution is not so clear. Mm. But like I guess what I'm trying to say is like when you take responsibility for yourself in entirety, mm. right? It's mm. like when mm. you mm. go, oh, that person said that like, and I'm angry now. It's like you let yourself get angry. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like that whole concept mm. of... You know, it's not as heavy as you saying, like you said, you said earlier, like, well, you've got no one to blame but yourself kind of thing. But yep. it's, it's not that drastic. No. But the, the concept's there. That's the con- right. The concept, the concept of, like, it's up to you how you feel about this or That's how it. what action you take next. And yeah. being responsible is a big one. I mean, I mean it's, it, most people I know are irresponsible to a degree or at least yeah. can be at certain times. So yeah. responsibility is a huge one. For sure. For sure. And like, um, if, like, I, I, I just think people don't make that connection, man. Like, it's uh, hard. You know, it, it's it a is hard. hard. One. And it's it, a hard it's, one. It is definitely hard. Like being real to yourself. Like, a lot of people think they're being real. Like I, I think I'm being as real as I can be, but it's, yep. it's not, it hasn't happened overnight. I probably thought I was real five years ago no and way. I wasn't. And, and you know what else? I might think I'm being real, real, really real with myself now. And mm. then, like, in five years, I'm like, you fucking new jack shit. That like, I don't think me. I know heaps now. Yeah. That's actually been coming up for me a lot. I'm like, the more I actually learn about things, yeah. not think I know, like, learn yeah. about things, I'm like, you don't actually fucking know anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and, and not even like that whole thing of like, the humble brag of like, I'm a student forever. Like, actually, shit, dude. I'm like, how much do you actually fucking know about stuff, man? <laughs> like, Yeah, it's almost like devaluing everything that you value sometimes is refreshing because it's like yeah. nothing matters. Yeah. Right? But um, I think that's too heavy. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think, you know, that's why uh, the initial question to you was like, how do you go about doing these podcasts every week and thinking as openly as big like this? Because sometimes you can't. It's, it's tiring as well. Yeah. You know, like you get a lot of energy from researching more and learning more. But like, yeah, yeah we're students for life. Life is long. So it's kind of like sometimes mm-hmm. maybe we just need to chill the fuck out. You know, like yeah. I wonder sometimes like do you talk to your partner when you're just chilling out with it? Do you always have these big DNMs or sometimes maybe small talk is okay? Nah, man, not always big DNMs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely know? not. Like if yeah. Leslie and his wife were like constantly, I'm, I'm like, have this picture of his wife going, oh, fucking hell, Leslie. Like, <laughs> can we just chill the fuck out tonight and like, you know, not, not search for the reason why we're on the planet or something? You know, that's the thing. It's like I have, I'm guilty of that myself. It's yeah. like, Sometimes people just don't want... It's almost like the my, my man, man of mine is <coughs> so hardcore into Star Wars that as soon as you mention it, oh, fuck, yeah. rah, for like 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's what's I? going down. Yeah. yeah. So I, in that intensity yep. knob, the volume knob, the, the intensity knob, not volume. Yep. It's intensity sometimes. So I, uh, 
I've acknowledged that I'm pretty intense internally. Yes or no? I don't think so. Okay. That's I, cool. I think you're pretty chill. That's the thing. Like, that's what I'm saying. I yeah. think you could go out there and, you know, you'd be fine. But, like, <laughs> if you're intense, yeah. like, you, there's something to worry about. Yeah. Like, I think, um, and it's one of those things, like, I am a deep thinker in terms of I think about things yeah. uh, down the track a lot. That's scary. Right? Mm. It is, but I kind of get comfort from it as well because, like, uh, from doing it for so long, I'll play out all the scenarios. You realize some are more likely than others. Fucking computer. Ding, 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 ding. A little scenarios. bit like that, I guess. I've never thought about it like that way, but, yeah, like, I guess there's all these flow charts going on in my mind, right? Mm. But, um, like, there's a time for that. I've, I've realized yeah. that's overthinking too, man. Right. Yes. Yeah, and and, and that's been a, for that shit. That's been a problem for me. Mm. That I really had to wind myself back from. And um, like, yeah, dude, you think again. You've learned that you focus on something enough, it's coming. To, it's coming to be. You mm. overthink about things a lot, and you worry about that worst case scenario. It mm. becomes a possibility for you. Yeah. And and I'm like, can't be like that all the time. Mm. So. I'm trying to scale that back. And, and there's also like tools and things you learn, right? So like now if I have something that is like circling in my head a lot, mm. I'm like, write it down. <laughs> yeah, it helps because it's out, not in, right? It's out. And once, yeah. once it's out, mm. like if you have something that you're worried about, mm. that you keep thinking about, when you write down every way you think about it, mm. once you've written it down, if you write it down again, mm. like... That's two times. Who the fuck's going to do that? Yeah. Like just physically, you're not going to yeah. do that. Yeah. And it makes you think of uh, like, I've written it down once. Yeah. It's out. So that's it now. Yeah. But, and then if you do think about it again, then it's like, well. It's there. There's a bit of importance now on it potentially because it's, you know, doubled up and it's pop, pop back up again. So maybe I should do something about that. For me, so. I think about it the other way now, like okay. opposite of that. So like before I would think about it and think about it and think about it and think about it and think about it. Whereas now mm. I'm like, just get it out. Because mm. once you've thought about it once, mm. you've thought about it. Yeah. It's not going to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what yeah. I thought about it 10 minutes ago to now, that yeah. same thought is Still the same, same thought. Same concept, right? yeah. So like yeah. when you write it out, yeah. it's out. I do the same thing when I'm um, designing mock-ups for clients with logo designs. Yep. The first logo designs that come to my mind are usually the worst. Yep. And if I don't get them out, they're going to be floating around They're going to keep going. Dude, I do the same so thing. So I right? just do the ugly logos, put them down. I'm like, that looks shit. And yep. like people looking over my shoulder, don't, don't comment. Shut up. Yep. I yeah. I know what dude. I'm doing. I'm doing this on re- purpose. It's shit. I know. Yeah, uh, oh, I don't have to think about that anymore. That's right. I've had ideas like for logos and stuff as well that in mm. my mind, I'm like, it's amazing. I've thought about it for like three days. I just haven't got to my computer to do it because I've been doing other shit. And then like I do it. Mm. I think it's, I'm like, this looks like shit. <laughs> 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 like, you just don't dump that. Totally. Yeah. And, and kind of brings me back to what I was talking about. I was like, if I just got that out, yeah. it was out. Yeah. And I freed that space up for what could be good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Totally. And, and, and that's the thing is like overthinking, things swimming around in your mind all the time. They take up space, bro. It's it's cause it's cause you're young as well. It's cause we're young, you know. It's like when 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 you look at people who are a hundred years old mm-hmm. and you see interviews with people that are over a hundred and what what they're on the planet for still and whether they have regrets or whatever. Yep. A they don't want to talk about regrets because the They've lived that long. They're like, they're, they're not in denial about it. There are none, you know. But a lot of them will say that so long as someone somewhere on the planet or as every day has, uh, makes, gets something out of them being around, gets some sort of, they, so long as they can be useful still, mm-hmm. then they're quite content and it, life's okay. So it's almost like when you get to that point, you're not going to have a billion thoughts running through your head all day. You yeah, know, I think you, the, you, the older you get, like you kind of have these experiences as well and you realize like what you're worried about isn't worth worrying about. Right. And, you know, you see, you see a lot of people do the sea change, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people will, you know, um, every day they'll go out to the jetty and fish. Yeah. 
and they have plenty of time to sit there and think while they're fishing, but they're probably not really thinking about much. Mm. So it's like that meditative state. It's it's almost like you know I say this all the time, but it's almost like the the Instagram chick that's at the gym at twenty years old, working her ass off, posting up photos of how how many reps she did that day. I'm like, but you're twenty. Yep. You know, like it's easy then. Mm-hmm. But I think like when you get to a point where you're older, it's like, yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Like yeah. I'm looking forward to more of a meditate meditative state. Like I think if you're young and you're pe- practicing meditation, oh man, Leslie's gonna kill me for saying this. Um, <laughs> it's like I tried meditation. I'm not good at it, mm-hmm. obviously, because I haven't tried it enough. Like I know that you need yep. to get good at shit, right? But for me, it's kind of like. I can do this. I can do this without meditation. I can, I can, I'm okay. I'm still there. Yeah. So I can still channel things and control it to a degree. Yep. But I think as I get older, I think meditation is going to start to really become attractive to me. Yep. Because it's going to naturally happen anyway. It's going to be this. That's interesting. It's going to be this. The older I get, the less I worry about things that I used to value. Mm. My, you know, our values shift over time. And there's like, just seeing enough old people being interviewed, I find it fascinating yeah. to watch videos of 100-plus-year-old people yeah. and just watching those interviews. Like, as much as a podcast is awesome for me, between two people that are open-minded and, like, trying to find out the answers, yep. just listening to someone just ramble... Totally, dude. That's, that's inc- 108 years old. I'm sitting there going, fuck. Super wisdom, dude. You know, super wisdom. Um, I was really blessed, man. My grandparents uh, lived with us all the time. Right? Oh, okay. Um, so, like my parents um, and my great auntie, my grand, my grandfather's sister. Yeah, right. She passed away um, not too long ago, man. She was ninety four. Damn. My yeah. grandpa lived to I think it was about ninety two around there. So what was it like conversing with them and seeing what made amazing, them happy? Dude. And, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, like first-hand experience of what you're talking about, right? You talk to them about the things and all the things they remember, man, and they, and they tell you stories about. Uh, Memories are so nice. Yeah, and, and it's all about uh, people they were with. People that have gone. Things they enjoyed with them. Yeah. Good times they had. Yeah. Never was it about like I had that thing, right? Right. Or it wasn't I, like hey, I had this amazing fucking car, bro, and it used to push out fucking two hundred kilowatts. Or bringing like, up like a Facebook fight you yeah, had with someone, or a, you never know, an, an enemy from you know. And, and if it was like, so my grandfather was like a really good athlete, right? He was really sh- dude. Even into his late eighties, he still had like a strong body. Like he yeah. had lats. If you shook your hand, you'd break your hand. Mm. Um, and, but. He was never like, oh, I did this massive deadlift. I did this. He was like, um, I used to train really hard and I'm strong now because of it. It's like mm-hmm. what you get out of the experiences and the things you do, not the thing that you did. True, humble, like humble for real. Like, yeah, man. Like kind of like proud and humble. And, and yeah, and he was a very proud man. Yeah. He was, right? He was proud of his achievement, but he put in work to do things. And, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. It's okay to be proud, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. Like, fuck, totally. Especially at that age. It's like, yeah, man. Oh, man, I'm going to own this. Yeah, but... Uh, what I'm getting at is like he was never about the thing. It was about how that thing made him feel, mm. right? Mm-mm-mm. My great yeah. auntie, yeah, she's like my mom, like my second mom, right? Um, it was always about like she took care of everyone in my whole family. And she never actually had like an employment job. Yep. From like uh, when she was 13, I think, 13 or 14. Wow. She dropped out of school to take care of her mother. Yeah, then her auntie, insane. and then lived with my grandfather, right? And her one of her other brothers, and like my grandma, once my grandfather got married, mm. um, and took care of all of them, man. Like in terms of took care of the house, did you everything. You hear a lot them. of that, hey, in that, that sort of time. Like yep. a lot of people yeah, man. Like that have one person in the family that sort of did that. That's right. Yeah. And, and my parents migrated here like 30-odd uh, years ago, like 36, 37 years ago. Mm. And... Um, my great auntie and my grandparents moved here. Of course. Right? Yeah. And yeah. then... New life, new place, what the fuck. And, and they like, raised us. Yeah. So, dude, my, my great yeah. aunt for like 80 plus years, mm. all she did was take care of people. Mm. Right? Mm. 
Um, and all she used to talk about was how people, like what she did with people. Yep. And those experiences. Yep. And when I think about it and dissect, it's like how that made her feel. Like yep. there were things that made her feel good. So she'd tell us stories about it. It's a vibe it. and it's, um, it's, it's really slowed down mm. and it's really, it's like what we think of old people changes as we get older. And what I think of old people now is the respect is where I thought it might have been 10 years ago or 20 years mm-hmm. ago, but now it truly is getting to yeah. where it should always have been or could always yeah. have been. So I used to always like try to respect your elders. You know, when you're young, you're like, nah, what the fuck? Nah. You know, and then yeah. eventually over time, it's kind of like, and I've written articles about respecting your elders when I was in, in, like in the early 2000s and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But now I really, really yep. mean it. Yeah. And it's like knowing that uh, I'm going to be around for a bit now, it's kind of like, well, it's okay to slow things down. Mm-hmm. It's okay to like, you know, I've gone back to like, oh, I'm only going to organize one thing in the day in the calendar, never yep. more than that. Or like okay. I've gone back to that. It's not a routine, but it's kind of like a little bit of a rule that's like going back to our time discussion a, a bit ago about who cares if it's a, a day, a week, a month. You know, if yeah. it's uh, it'll happen, it'll happen, kind of thing. Yeah, man. A little bit more easy with it. With um, time mm-hmm. on that, it's like the the issue with time comes up generally like when you agree on doing something with someone else, and there's a timeline on it. Deadline, <laughs> timeline, yeah, that's deadline. De- even the term deadline sounds nasty, yeah, man. That's right. If you don't hit it, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> that's freaky, eh? Yeah, yeah deadline. Like, that's right. God um, damn. And yeah, man, I think like that's where the conflict around time comes up mm. or, or where conflicts arise for people generally. It's when like it's, you're not just responsible. There's more party, there's that's more right. parties involved. And, and there's know. like this timeline out there, whether mm. it's explicit or not, and one of us isn't meeting it. Yeah. Right? It's like when you hear about all the time when chicks like getting antsy in their relationship, it's like I should be married by now. But you haven't asked me. That's your timeline. Oh, that's different. Yeah, but yeah, that's heavy, that one. Right? Yeah. Shit like that. It's like yeah. there's this timeline that you've got in your head for something. It's yeah. not being met by someone else. And now you're out of joint about it. Well, it's basically not taking life happens into consideration. That's what deadlines are to me. It's like, yeah, I, to me, it's like it's not even corporate. To me, it's political. I, that's, I always, everything that, that, that is way beyond my fucking thinking, mm-hmm. I just go... That's fucking politics. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, like the deadline is like, you know, um, I talked about this with a mate last night with computer games because the huge companies, and these are multi-billion dollar companies, mm-hmm. right? So the corporates say, this is the deadline, the game's coming out. So then they book everything. They book, yep. you know, the Sony PlayStation 5's coming out, this game is going to be ready for the launch. Yep. It's already in the advertisements, it's in the lead up, it's everything. So... There is no way of backing out of this. Yep. So the game's not finished. It's fucked. Out it goes. Okay. And then the whole world is like, uh, it's full of bugs. And you know, then yep. they release a patch a week after next week. They're scrambling to fix all the problems. Yep. But where once upon a time, there was no internet, there was no patches able, yep. you couldn't do that. So if you had a PlayStation 1, the game was perfect. Mm-hmm. So the, the concept of a declining generation, a declining time where now it's like the deadline is more important than polishing the product and extending the deadline. I get what you're saying. You know, yeah. so now we're living in a world of, oh, fuck that Hit product time that we no just what. bought. A year later, mm-hmm. it's broken yep. because no one had the year to test the product because it had to go out. Yeah. Why waste the whole year? You've got the product. Fucking send it out. Yeah. You know, even Apple products and all the cords and stuff starting to rip and shit. They didn't mean for that to happen. It's just because no one tested it for a year and then a year later everyone's having the problem. The so problem. yeah. So so it's like we're living in that now. You know, we we buy something, it doesn't last or and you know it in the sun it 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 fades or it's so become part of the norm. Yeah, I these think days. also like um, on the converse side of that, it's like having a deadline sometimes gets stuff to happen that would not have happened otherwise. 
You know what I mean? It, 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 it would yeah, have come, come, come at some point in time. But, um, you know, time sensitivity. It, you're, you're bang on. It's like without a deadline, shit might never happen. That's right. Hundred percent. So, right. uh, interesting. It's an interesting yeah. conversation in it all on itself. Yeah. Just the whole concept of um, good intentions versus shit hitting the fan because yeah. shit happens, and then it's almost like, is there a perfect solution? Probably not. No, there isn't. And um, intentions are really interesting thing to talk about. I think, man, mm. because like um, your intentions matter. Right, but what you do with those intentions matters more. <laughs> like, um, just having the intention to do something yeah. doesn't do anything. It, it's so it's a tough one, man. Because if you That's if you bring I it back to it. deadlines, right, yeah. and intentions and deadlines, the intention is there for the top level players, for everyone when they're shaking hands with the other person and the deal is made, yep. then all intentions are to meet the deadline. Mm-hmm. But then to have assumptions that yep. everyone working underneath you has the right intentions mm-hmm. to meet that deadline is basically impossible. Yeah. Because these people have their own lives. They're not, they don't have any ownership in this business. You've got the whip on them, but... Mm. If their heart's not in it and their intentions, you know, that's enough to have that that'll do attitude. Yeah. And no one's taking responsibility because no one can at that stage. Mm. You know, that kind of comes down to their intentions, though. You know what I mean? It's like we can only be responsible for our own intentions. Right, right, right. And um, like uh, I guess what I was trying to get at is like um, if you intend on training, and eating healthy to improve your health and you don't do it, your intention doesn't mean shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course not. Right? Yeah. It's like yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an intention to help someone who's like doing it tough right now on the street. Mm. I want to help them. I'm going to give them food. I'm going to help them with a the shelter. And you don't actually go out and buy them a meal. Like yeah. your intention doesn't mean shit. I've never liked that saying. Um, it's the thought that counts. I've always, I've never really liked it's, it. Yeah, it's not the thought that counts. It's what you do <laughs> yeah, yeah. based on the thought that counts. Because I feel I like, agree with you, man. Because it's a bit of a cop out sometimes. Someone will do something half assed. Well, when do you ever hear that expression? It's when someone doesn't fucking do something or doesn't that do it. Would have probably been nicer if it had been done. Do, someone doesn't put <laughs> the amount of energy into it that they know that they could have, but then they're just using it as a cover up or an excuse to say well at least I tried yeah but did you really try like it's so half ass that yes. yeah okay it's like when do you hear that someone gives you a shit gift yeah and then people be like oh it's a thought that counts because they just grab something from the pantry or whatever yeah. and just <laughs> right it's like <laughs> yeah your thought was I won't put that much effort into this yeah I won't find out what Justin really likes yeah 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 and they know they could have that's the thing that's, that, that's the difference it's like yeah. they you know they know that they could have if they're yeah. honest with themselves but then they totally. kind of like shit yeah totally yeah yeah I've never yeah. found that that saying particularly yeah. good yeah man it's not a good one <laughs> We can agree on that. Well, dude, I reckon we should wrap it up. I don't know exactly how long we've been speaking for. Um, me either, man. I think you got me my, I don't know, a couple, couple of hours. Yeah. But um, let's go grab a coffee and something to eat. You let's hungry? do it. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. Yep. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me, man. I called it a show. It's not a show, <laughs> you know. But th- it's just a catch up for yeah, me. Man. It's just a recorded catch up. Yep. But, um, dude, this is my favorite thing to do. Yeah, yeah, I it's love my it too. Thing to do. I find it. I, I've been saying to people like I just find it really therapeutic. Yep. You know, especially um, coming from someone that works from home. Yeah. So, and you're the one who suggested to go face to face today. Yeah, so man, I did. Yeah. Thanks for that, man. Like I know it's extra pain in the ass, but it's like the Zoom calls are really too comfortable. Yeah. You know, because I, I could be wearing my jammies yeah. down under the it's pants. It's different. It's a totally different dynamic, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, totally, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. It's the same thing with the Joe Rogan show. Like every time he has a guest that is not in the studio, mm-hmm. you can you can feel it. You can feel it's it it goes. The energy is different. It is. You know. Yeah. And um, it's especially bad when someone's got glasses. So when they got glasses and the screen's reflecting, mm. then you're 
watching two people converse about a very deep topic, but you can't see one person's eyes because of the reflection on the glasses. And you're like, Interesting. wow, eye contact makes a, a, big, a big difference. These yeah. guys aren't going to get any. I mean, yep. obviously voices, if you're just listening to a podcast, you wouldn't think that. But yep. for me, when I'm personally, when I'm watching a podcast and I can see, you know, it's almost like those um, psychologists who can tell how people are lying because of where their eyes are. If it's in like the bottom left corner, you're apparently remembering. Yeah. If it's oh, on the bottom yeah. right, you're yeah. making it up. <laughs> you know, there's little yeah, the cues. signs, the little yeah. cues. So when I'm watching, you know, it, when, you, when I watch a podcast instead of just listen to it, yep. I definitely pick more up. Definitely. So it's and, and it's like being in proximity to people is just different. Oh, energy. Energy, man. Yeah. And like it's all about that. And yeah. it's like when you think about it on a kind of like more extreme scale, like long distance relationships, oh. a lot of them don't work out, man, because you're not in proximity, right? There's so much that's like said between us right now yeah. that we're not saying. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just different. I prefer oh, it in man. person. Cool. Oh, me too, me too. Like e- even like all the really long relationships that I've had with, with girls, like where it's gone longer than, you know, four, four or five years or yeah. more, you become one. Like when you sleep in the same bed together mm. every night, something changes. Like yeah. so, something. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Chemistry and everything. It's just really bizarre. So, yeah, yeah that, that, that physicality or being close to people. Yeah. I mean, it's a vibe thing, man. I, I, that's why I just that put is. it down to. It is. I just that's put it, it. down to like fucking yeah, man. good vibe. I can seem to I could probably be one of those guys with a twig and like oh fuck the fucking water's here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah let's wrap it up uh, guys it. if you've made it this far thanks for listening this far and um, I will leave links in the description to Sean's stuff thanks man Appreciate cheers Sean it. awesome thanks man for me. cheers <laughs>